Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a really fun mega Christmas video. This video is filled with Dollar Tree DIYs and other items, but a lot of Dollar Tree items are used. And these go back to before I even had this channel. So unless you've been with me like way before that, there's some DIYs you have not seen. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Keep in mind it's a mega video. It's a bunch of videos put together. So sometimes the audio changes a little bit. I did my best to level it out. My filming, my lighting, all of those kinds of things weren't super great uh, in the beginning. I'm not saying I'm super great at it now, but I've definitely improved. But if you are in for some fun Christmas inspiration, this is a long one. Put it on, maybe start decorating your tree. If you dare do it before Thanksgiving or whatever time it is that you're watching this now, but enjoy this fun filled Christmas DIY inspiration. Let's get started. Now we're moving on to the next one and this sign here I got from the Dollar Tree. I am cutting the twine off of the top because I do not plan to hang this sign. It will just be setting on a shelf and I'm taking some sandpaper also from the Dollar Tree and just sanding off any glitter so that you will have a smooth surface. This sign did not have a lot of glitter. It was really just at the top. Um, and so then I'm painting this with, again, my inexpensive acrylic paint, 50 cents um, at, the, at Walmart, but you could use chalk paint, chalk paint or anything else for that matter. Um, so I painted the top and all of the sides, but you can do this obviously however you want. And then I decided that I actually wanted the top to be red. I changed my mind and make it up as I go along sometimes. Um, but I painted the top red and left the sides white. And then I decided to do the writing on the box with Scrabble letters because I had those when I was getting rid of an old game that was kind of worn out. I kept the letters on hand, but you can buy them at the at Hobby Lobby or you could use stencils or wood letters or stickers or whatever you want. I decided to write sweater weather and I am just gluing them from the back with the hot glue. The hot glue sets quickly. Um, and I didn't want any chunks like on the front. I have a low temp hot glue gun and so I just kind of smeared it after I put it down with my finger to smooth it out. Um, so whatever, whatever you wanna do. That's just what I was doing. And then I'm just hot gluing the letters onto my box and then the stickers that I used for the last project from the Dollar Tree, I used a couple of those gold stars. I'm now going to use the white snowflakes and I am just, or the wooden snowflakes, and I'm painting them white. Now I'm just going along the edges of the box, as well as the letters, and just kind of adding some, I don't know, snowy effect, I guess. Um, so just kind of doing that until I thought there was enough snow. And now I am gluing on the snowflakes. I decided to put three of those across the middle, and I love how this little sign came out. So for this first one, we're using these tumbling tower blocks. These are from the Dollar Tree and they are found in the kids toy section. I use these all of the time in my videos. And I'm using a total of two packages. It worked out perfectly, exactly what I needed. So two packages and I'm just arranging them to the shape of a Christmas tree. Um, I do end up moving these off the tablecloth because I decided I needed a flat um, surface to work on. So once I have these arranged the way I want them, I begin gluing them together. So I'm going to glue each row together, the blocks together to create each row, and then we'll glue the rows together themselves. Now I just want to let you know that these blocks are not all exactly the same. Like when you lay them down, they're not completely flat. They're not bad. They're not like totally disfigured or rough or anything, but they're not perfect. Um, so just want to set your expectations there. <laughs> so we're just going to glue this together until we have a Christmas tree. All right, so now we're going to begin painting. I just grabbed different shades of green I had in my stash, and I will show you them um, more specifically later, along with some white, and I am just mixing paint up, making it up as I go along. I grabbed some of my paint brushes. I believe all of those there are from the Dollar Tree, um, and I'm just going in different layers until I get the desired look I'm going for, which I wasn't totally sure. You could also do this done in white. I think that would look really pretty as well, but I really wanted to do the green. 
and this mossy color at the end I think is really what helped get me the, like the deeper shades that I was looking for but it's not a flat color like I said I layered the different greens and um, I think layering it just gives it kind of an elevated look so that's what I'm doing here kind of letting it dry in between some of the coats I didn't let it completely dry in between anyways now I'm moving on to the base I found this block at the Dollar Tree and I've got my antique wax from Waverly and we're just gonna paint the base with that now I wasn't totally sure how this was gonna work out so I also pulled out these gift boxes that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and decided to paint them so I wasn't sure which one was going to work these actually came in a two-pack which was great um, and you'll, you're going to see how this all works out later, but I began to paint this one just with some Waverly chalk paint. I thought the chalk paint would be good because it's a thicker paint and would give a better coverage for something so bright. Alright, so I've got my Jenga box painted and we are going to use them to basically attach to here and sandwich the tree base in between and I'm gonna hope that's gonna work so I'm gonna start by attaching one of these to the center here I don't know and go from there I will give you a tip here make sure you hold it and let it dry before moving on to the next step um, just give the glue a little extra time than you might normally to set up that definitely made a difference because I tried it twice <laughs> I just didn't show you all of that All right, so this is how it came out and I absolutely love it. Obviously, this isn't like in a spot where I'm decorating right now. I just took everything off of here to show you. Um, and it looks great from both sides, which I love. So depending on where you put it, you don't have to worry about it being seen from the other side. And if you can't find these blocks, because I know they can be hard to find, um, these big ones at Dollar Tree, you could still use one of those gift boxes like I used and like attach it with like a wooden dowel and paint that. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but this is how I wound up doing it and I love it. And it's a really good size. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I'm working with from the start, but of course things may change. I got these Christmas uh, tree cutouts from the Dollar Tree as well as this. Something for my paint, some Mod Podge, all my different brushes, some hot glue, because I think I'm gonna need that. Um, we got pencil and scissors, got some scrapbook paper. These are the two that I think I'm gonna use, but I'm not totally sure. Some spackle to fill the holes on this. This is from the Dollar Tree. It's not great, but it works good enough. This is just left over from, whoops, some um, Ikea furniture that we had. This was like an optional thing to do in our nightstands and we didn't do them so I had these pieces of wood but you could make something like this out of um, the tumbling tower jingle box gluing them together I've done that before um, or just a piece of wood that you need cut that you can get cut um, whatever you want to do and paints of your choice and I'm going to lay this tablecloth out because I tend to destroy my table all right I'm going to start by filling these holes just to give that a chance to dry All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is see if I can pull this apart. That was my intention, was to just use these as two trees. So let's see if I can pull this apart without breaking them. If not, this project is gonna have to change. Yay, it worked. I was trying really hard not to break the tree. Let's see if I can get them both off. All right, that worked. I am just going to sand down the bottom a little bit. Okay, so for the trees, you can either paint, you could use some scrapbook paper, you could use fabric, you could use anything you want. I am going to, I think, paint two and use scrapbook paper on the other two, but I wanna paint the backs of all of them um, with the Waverly Antique Wax, and so that's what I'm going to do now just to um, get that out of the way, I'm gonna just do the backs of all of them. And I don't care, like these have rough edges from where they came off, that's okay. This is gonna be the back, and I don't care if, if there's little grooves and stuff. It's just so that from the side it doesn't look, you know, awful. So we're gonna take care of that real quick. I forgot, I need to fill these holes too. 
I did end up filling the holes on the larger ones, but you actually wouldn't need to if you were going to be putting paper over them, which I did on one of them, or you could put a bow or something else to cover it up. Once that spackle dries, you do want to sand it before you paint it. Um, I just did that off camera because I did it just somewhere else real quick because I didn't want to make the area where I had wet paint dusty, um, but just make sure you do that. I just used some, you know, cheap sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. It's not a tough, deep job, but you just want to smooth it over before you paint it. All right, so admittedly, I didn't do a great job filling the holes or the stuff I used wasn't great, although I have used it before, but most of this is going to be covered anyway, so I'm going to move forward. We'll be fine. All right guys, so I'm not gonna show you every little bit of this, but I just am mixing whatever greens I have on hand. I didn't buy anything specific for it, but um, I'm just painting them. I did realize that the edges of these don't really need to be painted because they had a nice brown color and I liked that, so I did not worry about painting the edges. And then I went in and dry brushed with some black and I just kind of went back and forth creating a little bit of a layered look, which gives it a little bit more dimension and to me looks a little bit nicer. Um, and I just kept going until I got what I liked. When it came to the um, ones that I was going to cover with scrap of paper, I just cut it out, well I traced it and then cut it out. I ended up doing this kind of out of frame and I realized that I'm a really slow cutter because I'm very particular, so I actually really did not enjoy this part, but I mean it came out great and it was easy. And then I just used some Mod Podge and um, spread that out and put the paper on top and let that just kind of dry for a second and then I did do another coat on top just to try to seal it. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I decided to this time around and I did try to smooth it out, get out all the wrinkles. I did end up with a few wrinkles um, on the, or bubbles on the bigger one, but it really isn't that noticeable when the project is all done. All right, so everything is dry. I did paint a couple of these, about eight of these tumbling tower blocks because I was messing around trying to figure out how I was gonna do this and I decided I wanted some of these. So I just um, painted these with the antique wax too just so that they would blend in. And my goal is to, um, and I've been messing around with kind of the pattern and how I was gonna do this, but is to stagger these on here like so. I hope the angle's okay. I tried to get a good angle for this. So what I'm gonna do is start by attaching blocks behind um, the trunk of each tree and then we'll go from there. I know this DIY is a little bit longer than normal for me, but I just wanted to show you all of the little details so that as you set out to do it yourself and make it your own, you kind of know the things to do and to not do. Now if you can see in the back, the paper is hanging over just a little bit. You could go around with like an X-Acto knife or something um, and take that off. You could also even try sand, sanding it with sandpaper. Sometimes if you go in a downward motion, it'll take off the rest now that everything's dry. But I'm not gonna, I'm not even worried about it. I mean, I feel like it's finished enough from the back. I'm going to attach blocks in between these to help keep them a certain distance apart too. It'll also help secure it. So I'm just messing around with where I want them placed and I'm just using the board at the bottom just to kind of try to make sure I've got all of the bottoms like so that they'll be flat <laughs> so that everything can lay properly and um, once I get it I just kind of hot glue everything down. I did continue to use blocks in between each tree um, which I'm really glad I did because I do feel like it made this piece a little bit more stable and with them painted that same brown color you really can't see them at all. All right, real quick before I bring it over to another spot so you can see it better, I decided to add on a little star. It helped cover up where the hole was, plus I thought it added a nice like pop and just, I don't know, something different um, on that one tree. Uh, that way that everything's not exactly the same. You know, I like it like similar but different. Anyways, that is from these stickers from the Dollar Tree and I just used one, one of them. They are stickers, but I did hot glue it on 
as well. All right, let me bring this over to a wall so you can see it undistracted. All right, there are still a little bit of shadows and stuff, but the lighting's much better. I think this thing came out super cute. I think I know, maybe, I think I know where I wanna use this. But um, you can certainly, like I said, do any variations with paint or paper colors or like whatever. I had a few different ideas. I thought about putting some words here at the bottom that said like Merry Christmas, but the stuff I would need for that I wanna use for something else. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. I really like the gold star just because like I said, it feel like it kind of makes these not identical. And I love like golds and I like love metallics for Christmas with a traditional plaid. Like to me, that's just like super traditional. Anyways, I love it. Let's get on to the next one. All right, so for this first one, I am using the canvas that is left over from an 8x10, I think it is, um, framed canvas from the Dollar Tree. I previously used the frames in other DIYs and I saved the canvas. And then I've got some metallic paint, I believe that's from Folk Art, which is from Plaid. And I am dry brushing that on to my canvas, just kind of doing the amount that, you know, looks good to me. I love the Plaid products. They actually sent me quite a few paints to try out. Um, I'm still using the ones that I already had in my stash, um, but they are uh, carry brands like Folk Art and Waverly and Apple Barrel and ones that you are probably already yet familiar with. So now that I've got my paint on my canvas, I am laying out some Jenga blocks or tumbling tower blocks rather from the Dollar Tree. These are found in the toy section and I am trying to make myself a frame. You can see here my Kirkland's inspiration and if you were just using a canvas with the frame, you would take the canvas off, use the frame for this part instead of making your own. But I just wanted to use up what I already had and I had tons of canvases on hand. And then I have this cute little DIY kit. We're gonna come back to that in a second. This is from the Dollar Tree and I just wanted to make sure it was going to fit in there. And we're going to begin gluing our blocks together. I am using wood glue. I was afraid that the hot glue would create a little bit too much of a gap in there but um, the wood glue takes a lot longer to set. So use whatever you have on hand, whatever you want. I did choose a wood glue that dries clear just because I feel like that's a safer bet. Um, but I'm gonna uh, glue together. I used five on the top, five on the bottom, and then four on the sides. But you can see I staggered where I put the side pieces um, in line with the bottom ones in order to get myself a rectangle um, and for everything to fit properly. Like I said, you could just use the actual frame if you want. And what um, the other thing is, if you wanted a square frame like the Kirkland's item, then you probably would want to pick that up from like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I've never seen square canvases at my Dollar Trees anyway. So, um, you know, like I said, this is an inspiration, not an exact dupe. But what I did was glued all of the sides together and then let that dry really well and glued them all together. So this takes a little bit longer, like I said, because I'm using the wood glue, but you can do it however you choose. Now I have my little kit here. Now they, these came in lots of different styles. I picked up a few of them. Um, I picked up one with the nativity scene. This piece, I'm just gonna show you, this is how it would work if you were gonna use the kit. You just kinda put them in those slats, but I am totally saving that piece for future projects because I've already got some ideas for that. And I decided to paint everything in almost like a brown stain. I watered down just a light brown paint that I had on hand, brushed that on and wiped it off. And I loved the color that came out here. Use whatever you have on hand. Like I said, I'm just trying to kind of go through. I have a lot of products, a lot of paint on hand. So I'm trying to use what I have and I just picked a color I liked. And I'm just using the, like the manger scene area and then Mary Joseph and baby Jesus but you can use, that came with three wise men, I'm not using that, but you can use whatever you want. And I'm just showing you, I'm going back and forth because that's kind of how I did the project, letting things dry. Um, so I glued together the frame, and now I was just trying to see how I wanted to glue this all together, if I wanted the uh, people to be behind or on top. I went with on top because I felt like everything would stay better. Once again, I'm using wood glue, but feel free to use hot glue, and you just gotta hold it for, you know, a little bit longer than you would hot glue, for it to hold and then a little bit longer for it to set. And I'm just gluing them on the frame and then we're gonna put baby Jesus on top. Now obviously the inspiration piece, this was not a 3D piece, but I had this and I thought it looked really cute, but you could certainly freehand the image that they had because it was very simple. And I was really unsure about doing the writing and the words, 
but I decided to give it a shot. So I'm using a fine tip black marker because that's the writing was black and then they had child in gold. So I'm using these rub on transfers from Dollar Tree. I will admit these gold rub on transfers are not easy and it did not work. Um, all the other ones I've used have worked great. I don't know if it was because it was on canvas and the texture was bad, but I rubbed and rubbed and this just, this did not work. Um, I was kind of anticipating that as a possibility. I didn't like my, the writing altogether anyway. So I have lots of these canvases on hand, so I didn't mind experimenting with it. I just did another one. So that's why the painting looks a little bit different. And I'm just going to trace out the size for the frame. Um, I didn't want any, I'm going to attach this on the back and I didn't want there to be any overhang. So what I did was trace it out and then cut it a little bit in from that line. Um, I'm just wanting it to look as finished as possible on the back. You could also just simply cut this out with some scissors. You could attach it to the frame and then cut it out. But like I said, I just wanted it to look nice and finished from the back. So that's how I did it. And then we're going to glue this on to the back of the frame. It might be easier to lay the canvas down and put the frame on top. I did put the frame on the bottom and laid the canvas on top. Do whatever works for you, but I'm just going to hot glue that all the way around and then we're going to hot glue on our little nativity scene. So I decided to do it just without the words. If you have a Cricut or nicer handwriting, the tools I had on hand, I just could not make it look the way I wanted it to. So I thought instead of continuing to fight it, I still love this. So like I said, not a dupe, definitely an inspiration piece, but um, I love how that came out. And then I wanted, it stood up okay, but I wanted it to just stand up better. So I took one of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree and painted it in that same gold paint. And then apparently I did not tape myself, record myself attaching this. So I'm going to just kind of explain it to you. I also ended up taking a couple of tumbling tower blocks. I used wood glue and hot glue on the bottom of this. And then I just used a couple of tumbling tower pieces on the back and just used some hot glue to secure those in to hold it while the wood glue on the bottom of the frame set. So not sure what happened. I don't even think I must, I think I must have not pressed record because there's, I've got nothing. Anyways, but I wanted to show you how this item came out. I love it. I love the colors. Um, not everything I do is in neutrals, but I did love the neutral look of this, the simplicity of it, and it stands up really well. And I really like how this one came out. I hope that you do too. This first one, I have this little piece that is a tabletop decor item from Dollar Tree. Of course, we'll be DIYing it. You could use this or really anything similar. There's lots of different options and different sizes and shapes at Dollar Tree. And then I've got these little stickers. I can't remember exactly what they're called. They're the little like gem stickers. These ones are in a strip. They're like all connected, but you can easily cut them. And I'm just going to place them around the perimeter of the item. And I'm just following the line that's there because I thought, well, that's there. It'll help me make sure everything's even. Um, but obviously if yours doesn't have that, you don't need to. But I just want to be able to give a little bit of texture to this piece. So once I have the gems laid all the way around, we're going to coat the whole thing in white paint. I am using white uh, paint. I think it's called Snow White from Apple Barrel and it's an acrylic paint. I do a lot of times use chalk paint on these types of items because it is a little bit thicker and usually takes less coats. This did take two or three coats. I'm going lightly on the edges just to because some of the paint dripped down and I wanted to make it all the same. But you can use whatever paint you want. I just have a lot of acrylic paint that I'm wanting to use up. And then I have in my stash from last year, although I'm sure these are coming out this year, this little wooden ornament uh, piece. And I am taking this glitter foam that I have on hand. Not totally sure where it came from. Probably, I don't know, probably Hobby Lobby. I don't know. I've had it for many, many, many years. And I cut that out to fit the back of the ornament. And then I'm using this gold metallic paint. I think it was from Folk Art to paint the top of this ornament. And you can use anything. I almost used, but uh, with my gems on this piece, it didn't work. I almost used a little um, truck ornament from Dollar Tree, but you can use anything you want. We're just making a little sign that could be used for like a tear tray or just tucked into a shelf, and we're embellishing it. So whatever you want to use. Once I got my couple coats of paint on here and it's nice and dry, I'm dry brushing with the gold, mainly along the edges to make those little um, gemstones, little things pop but I also did a little bit on the rest of it. And then we're gonna take some hot glue and we're going to attach 
the glitter side of the foam to come through. Now, even if you're not a huge glitter fan, obviously you can use paper on the back of this. You could use nothing on the back of this. Um, but I don't mind glitter for Christmas time. I feel like all the pretty lights kind of glisten off of the glitter, so I don't mind it. And then I am just going back in and doing a little paint on the edge with the gold because from the side you'd be able to see the red foam, and I just wanted to change that. So now I'm using a good amount of hot glue, and we're going to attach this on the piece. I decided to put mine at like a little bit of an angle, but do it however you want. Like I said, you may not even use an ornament. You can use any embellishment, but just wanting to give you some ideas. And then I have these little bows. They're also from Dollar Tree, and I'm just cutting off the little twist tie in the back and using some hot glue and attaching that to the top. And then last but not least, this is not required at all, but I'm taking some pretty uh, like Christmassy scrap paper to cover the back. The back on this does not look bad. You could leave it. You could paint it. You could go all out and make it a true double-sided one, um, but I'm just covering it with this paper using some hot glue to attach that, but you can do that however you want. And then you can either use the sandpaper technique to trim off the edges, or I used a cutting tool, whatever you want to do. And here's how it looks all finished up. I just love it. I think it's really cute. Like I said, do anything you want with this. Perfect for a little tiered tray or to just tuck in with some of your other decor. And you can really personalize it and do whatever you want with it. So for this next one, I have this little wall decor from the Dollar Tree and a little um, glass vase or not glass vase, glass candlestick. So I took off the little hardware from the back and I wanted to scrape off the Emily here. Um, it didn't, it came off fine, but it did not come off in a way that I could save it. So maybe you'll have better luck than me, but I'm just using like a putty knife to scrape that off. And then we're gonna peel off the paper, which actually came off pretty good. Um, if it doesn't for you, don't worry about it. It doesn't necessarily have to, but when you have a smoother finish, it works great. So now I'm painting the edge of this with some more of that white acrylic paint. Um, also, I wanted to say this sign, if you see it, it's in like the frame home decor area. They had it in different um, shapes. They have a triangle one, which would be great to make a little Christmas house on, but I did not get one of those. Um, anyways, it's just a round sign. You could use different, um, I know in the seasonal decor, they've had round signs before as well, so you could use one of those. And I'm just cleaning my candlestick with some rubbing alcohol and then painting it with acrylic paint. Let it thoroughly, thoroughly dry in between coats. Chalk paint might be a better option, but I wanted to see if I could do it with my acrylic paint. And I, you can. You just got to let it dry really well in between. Um, I've had this candlestick forever. I have no idea if it was from Dollar Tree or not, but I just don't use it. So I was like, let me just pull it out for this. But Dollar Tree has lots of candlesticks. They have glass ones and ceramic ones. So... Um, now we're going to go back and forth because this is kind of the method that I did mine in. But I'm going to take a glue stick all across the back of this or what we're making at the top. I did also, by the way, paint the bottom of this white. Um, you don't necessarily have to, but I did. Um, my glue stick ran out, so I went and grabbed another one. And then I'm going to take some scrapbook paper that I had on hand, which was probably from Hobby Lobby. But you can use anything you've got. And I'm going to cover this. You could also do this with... A piece of fabric or you could paint it you could paint it solid you could paint on a buffalo check pattern whatever you want but I'm going to smooth that out and then I'm going to choose to use my cutting mat and my little cutting tool here to trim this up but you can also use the sandpaper technique which honestly I do think works better but I wanted to I don't know I guess switch things up for this video and then we're going to give a good coat of Mod Podge I got a little goofy piece in there and I'm going to Mod Podge the top and the sides of this piece just to seal that paper in nice and good. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know what you like. It also lets YouTube know that you're liking my video and makes it more likely for them to suggest it to others. Once all of my coats were on and thoroughly dried for the candlestick, we're going to give that a coat of Mod Podge as well. That just helps keep the paint from chipping off. Um, in my experience, I've noticed that that just really helps a lot. So that's what I'm doing there. And there was a little bit of paper left on the end of this, on the edges of this. So I am going back with a little bit of sandpaper. But this is what you would do if you were going to just fully remove the paper that way. You just sand down and away once your Mod Podge is nice and dry. It really does work well. It gives you a nice clean edge. And then I'm going to take some E6000 
Um, I guess because I'm using glue and I'm making a little stand. Well, of course I'm using glue. Because I'm using glass, I wouldn't trust the hot glue. And the hot glue may have worked, but because I'm going to actually put pieces on this, I just wanted to make sure I had a good hold. So I'm putting some E6000. That does take a good 24 hours to cure. Um, I think even 72 hours is what it's recommended. But then I just eyeballed the center and placed it on. And this is how it came out. I think it's super cute. And it'll just be kind of a nice little riser to add a little bit more, um, you know, detail as I decorate. You could easily use this all year round if you wanted as, as well. And even the fall. But I did make it for Christmas. So I'm starting off with these globe vases, I guess, from Dollar Tree. They're in like the vase section. I picked them up a while ago. These are items that aren't just available at Christmas time. And I am pouring in some chalk paint and we're just going to coat the inside of these. Now this I'm going to do in real time without um, speeding it up for a little bit just so you can kind of see that process. My recommendation, I've also done this with acrylic paint in the past, but I did use chalk paint and I did actually water it down because my bottle was getting towards the end and it was just really really thick but you can use acrylic paint because I have done that I've done this many many times you want to not use too much paint and just take your time and slowly turn it until everything is coated and then you want to uh, pour out let the rest of it drip out now one thing I did this time that I would do differently is there was a little bit of paint wet paint still in the bottom of each of my projects and I was like, oh, it'll just dry. I'll just leave it. It's not that much. It'll eventually dry. The problem is the parts where the, the paint um, pooled and puddled, once it dried, it did crack. Now, you can't see them in any of the projects just because of the locations of them, but I would not do that again. That's the first time I've ever done this that way. I've done this, like I said, many times. So definitely, you know, get yourself like a paper plate or something and turn it upside down. First, pour out as much of it like this as possible so that you don't have a puddle around the rim of the dish that you're using, but um, then stick it upside down like on a paper plate or something and let all of the paint drip out. So that is going to be my little tip to you for doing this. So for this project, we uh, are using two of them, and um, once they're all dry, I'm going to go back in on one of them, and I'm going to just paint a little face. I'm just using the end of a paintbrush for, we're making a snowman, I think I already said that, for the eyes and the mouth, and then I'm going to paint on with a little paintbrush the carrot nose. Now, this isn't perfect. I'm totally freehanding it. You could easily use buttons or even stickers, and then afterwards, I was thinking, I think I want to use puffy paint next time or like the fabric paint. Dollar Tree does sell it, and um, I was seeing Kelly from Kelly Barlow Creations use it on a project. It wasn't like this, but she was using it on a project and I thought that stuff is so easy to control. Like you can almost write with it. I wish I would have done that. Um, but the good news is with this, if you mess up, the paint can just easily be wiped off the glass. No problem. So you can always start over if you need to. And now I'm taking one of these white circle foam pieces. They come in a two pack from the Dollar Tree and a wooden black. And I'm going to paint both of them black. Now what I was hoping to do was find a little hat ornament from the Dollar Tree. They've had them before. I'm guessing they're going to have them this year, but I have not seen them yet at my stores. So I'm making my own hats. But if you can find a little hat ornament um, at Dollar Tree or Walmart or even Hobby Lobby, then you can kind of skip this step. But we're going to just make a hat by painting these both, both black. And then I will attach them with some hot glue. And I think I use a little bit of wood glue as well. And I do paint the underside here of this piece just so that the bottom rim is black as well. So now I'm taking this bandana piece from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting a strip of this. You can use any type of fabric or material. You could use some felt, whatever you want. But they do have these at the Dollar Tree. And I cut them so that I wanted like, because these are big squares, I wanted to see a little bit of both sides. So that's why I cut it the way I did. And I'm just hot gluing the edges to kind of clean it up a little bit. And we're going to do some embellishing on the little hat. So once I have all of my clean edges, we're going to start hot gluing this to like the bottom part of the, of the hat here. And we're just going to hot glue that all the way around. And then I kind of dug through my little stash to find some things to embellish this with. I have the hats just leaning on this box of pine cones because I needed it to stay up. Um, and I'm just using a little piece of the garland ties, I think they're called, from Dollar Tree from previous years. I just cut off a little piece of that. But you could use anything from like a, 
you know, Christmas pick or whatever. And then I'm going to hot glue three little jingle bells. Again, also from my stash from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to glue three of them on, kind of like little holly berries. And then once that was done, I thought I was done. And I dug through my little bin and found these little pine cones. They're these little plastic pine cones that don't, didn't really look very good on the piece I took them off of. But I didn't think they looked bad on this. So I hot glued two of them on. I was just struggling with the hot glue strings there. And then we have that all embellished. Now we're going to assemble the whole thing together. I'm using some E6000 to attach the two globes together. I'm calling them globes. I don't know. I guess that's not right. I don't know. Round vases. And the E6000 jar is sometimes, or bottle is sometimes hard to open. So I needed to grab some pliers. And I'm just going to put that along the rim and then we're going to set it on top. And then I am going to go around with some hot glue. Hot glue and glass isn't necessarily the best hold, which is why I went with E6000. But that does take a little time to dry. So I just put a little bead around the um, two here just to make sure it stayed together while the E6000 dried. So I made another little strip of fabric like I did for the hat, and I'm just kind of gluing it together again here, and we're making a little scarf. Once again, use any type of material that you want for this, but I am going to, once again, I'm this time I'm just going to hot glue it. I'm not super worried about that coming off, so hot glue it around, and when it got near the face, I just was careful to, you know, angle it and stuff so that we didn't block any of the face and have it crisscross. And then I trim off the edges because um, those were where the seams were and then cut in little slits to make a little bit of fringe on the scarf. And there went my camera because I had it not on my tripod for this because I was trying to get a better angle so that you could actually see what I was doing. So here I am cutting in that little bit of fringe. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Remember those things help out YouTube creators. It helps YouTube know that you're liking it and more likely for YouTube to share my video with others. So now I'm once again using E6000 to put the hat on. I was really trying to get it centered, um, but just put that on there. And then once again, I'm going to go around with just a little bit of hot glue, not like the whole way around, but just enough to kind of help that hold in place a little bit. And that is it for this snowman. I think he came out really cute, and um, yeah, I love how he came out, and he's a good size, and this was a really fun project. So we're going to do one more snowman here, and this time I am using an old jar. I always save jars. This was a pickle jar, and I'm going to do the same technique here, but you could use a meat, like a skinnier jar, a spaghetti sauce, sauce jar, whatever you want. Both of these ideas I kind of saw on Pinterest. But I saw them multiple times, so there's not like like an over the last year. I've seen just pictures, and they stuck out in my mind. So nothing in particular um, to really reference, but I just kind of saw the idea. And actually, the one for this, I don't know if, if it used a mason jar and an ornament, but when I saw it, I, I remember thinking, oh, I could do that with a mason jar and an ornament. So I have a little plastic ornament from the Dollar Tree, and I for the um, this is going to be the head. You could also use like a large styrofoam ball. But I'm using these little styrofoam snow pieces. They are annoying. They static like crazy. But I had bought them a long time ago, and I'm like, I need to just use them up. So for the head, I decided to just make a little funnel with some paper and use those to fill this up. And it just took a little bit of finagling, but I got it. And as I got to the top, I just kind of kept tapping down the ornament and putting more in to just make sure that I was filling in all of the air gaps because I didn't want the pieces to like settle as time went on and then have like gaps in where this, you know, in the snowman's head that were all clear. So, um, but you could once again paint the inside or use something else. There's lots of little faux snow options at the Dollar Tree and craft stores. So I just popped the top back on and now I'm using a sock. This is a fuzzy sock. These are actually from my drawer, but um, they have them at the Dollar Tree and that's where I bought it. And I thought, you know what, let me just pull this out and buy myself some new socks. So that's what I decided to do, but I'm just going to hot glue that around. We're going to make the hat as well of this, as the scarf out of this so that they're matching because you know you want your winter gear to match. So I'm just doing a little bit at a time, going to hot glue that around 
just getting the angle I want based on how I want the head to sit on the jar. I think I'm just using a little glass here to sit it on, um, the ornament on while I do this, but um, we're just gonna hot glue that all the way around. And then I decided how tall I wanted it to be. I ended up cutting it off right before the heel of the sock. And then I'm going to take some yarn. I just had some white yarn, but you could use twine or any string you want and just tie off that top. And I did wrap it around just a couple times just to kind of give a little bit of a, like a thicker white band there and tied it in a knot and trimmed that off. So once again, I'm going to paint on the face using the same technique I did before, but you could do, you know, whatever you wanted. If you have a Cricut, you could just print off the pieces or cut out the pieces, however that's called. I clearly don't have a Cricut, not sure the verbiage to use. Um, and this I did do it a little bit on an angle. Um, you're going to see when I put it all together how I had it, um, but we're just going to paint that on. And I did, I don't know if I said this earlier, I did just use acrylic paint for that. And then I found these little red buttons in my stash and painted them black. You can buy buttons, like containers of buttons at the Dollar Tree. You can um, use some from, you know, that you have lying around your house. Um, or you could use little pom-poms, whatever you want. Now we are going to attach this head once again using the E6000. And then I go, go around with just a little bit of hot glue, being careful to make sure hot glue doesn't get on any surface that's like going to be seen. Um, that's just, you know, you want to be mindful of that. And then we're going to take the sock and I'm just going to cut a strip that goes all the way to the tip of the sock because I do want to add that little detail at the end there. And I'm just going to cut that into two pieces because one was not going to be long enough for the scarf. So I cut it in two. We're going to hot glue the ends together to make ourselves a longer piece. And then I'm just going to attach this to the back of the scarf, or back of the scarf, back of the snowman's head. Oh yeah, I cut some fringe in um, first. And then we're going to hot glue it to the back of the jar, like at the snowman's back of his neck. And then we're going to wrap it around. I really did not um, hot glue except for the back and then here in the front. And it's stretchy. So I just kind of stretched it to the spot and the angle that I wanted it to hit. And we have a scarf. I realize I make weird faces and I got a lot of necks at this angle, but um, you're welcome. Now I'm just gonna hot glue on those buttons and then this snowman is also done. Isn't he super cute? I have the hat kind of angled more in the back, um, but I love how this little guy came out. Really cute and just use a jar that I had on hand. So for this first project, I'm using this frame that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I think it was originally like $15.99, but I got it on clearance for just a couple of bucks. But you can use a frame or a wall decor piece from Dollar Tree or something you picked up at a thrift store. It really doesn't matter. You'll see you just kind of, it doesn't even have to be framed technically, but um, anything like this will, will do. And I just pulled off that clothespin and sanded that down to smooth it out. And we're going to tape off the frame because I wanted to keep that white. And we're going to paint the back part of this. And I'm going to use Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Crimson. And I'm going to give this a couple of coats. I wanted a nice, thorough um, coverage of it. But obviously, once again, based on what you're using for the base of your project, what you're going to do is going to vary a little bit. Now, I got my inspiration for this idea on Pinterest. And I found it like a very long time ago. And I'm going to look to see if I can find another link but as of right now when I go to click on the link there's nothing there so I'm going to do my best to find a picture of my inspiration to link down in the description box for you um, I didn't follow any instructions I just had found the image and saved it but now the link seems to not be working so I'll see what I can do to remedy that um, but I just don't know at the time of me doing this voiceover so I have a couple packages of bells from the Dollar Tree they have them in various sizes and colors in this particular one I think I only found them in the silver but just do whatever colors and everything works for you I'm sure you can find something like this at um, Hobby Lobby as well but I am using some green paint and I'm just using a stencil brush to stipple that on and then kind of dabbing off some of it so that it's not a thick green coat it's kind of like rustic green I don't know if that's like a thing but almost like how rust would look on it you could also make these look rusty by using like brown paint that would be cute too Anyways, um, now that I've got them all, I'm just arranging them on for as a Christmas tree. We're going to use some hot glue to attach them and just hold it 
you know, until it fully sets with the, whenever you're using hot glue on metal, it can be a little finicky, but this worked just fine and it's holding up well. Um, but I just used plenty of hot glue and hold it, held it really still until it set. So I've got a wood piece just for my stash that I think was originally from Dollar Tree. I glued that on for the stem, but then I didn't really like the wood look. So I ended up painting it white, but then brushing a lot of the paint off. You'll see it at the end. And then for the star on top of the tree, I didn't have any of these star stickers. This is, there were some star stickers at some point um, from Dollar Tree, but I didn't have any left. So I took the white or the snowflake, painted it white, and then sprinkled on some glitter that I had in my stash while it was still wet. And then we're just going to glue that on for our star on top of the tree. And then I will put some Mod Podge on top to just help keep that glitter from coming off. But you could use anything you want. I'm just trying to show you ideas. And I'm just using what's in my stash as well. Here it is all finished. I don't have like a staging area for my final shots. So I try to make it so that you can at least see everything well with good lighting. So anyways, I love, absolutely love how that one came out. So for this next one, I am using a canvas from the Dollar Tree. This comes in a three pack. These are the little ones. I think they might be like four by sixes. Now my inspiration piece also came from um, Pinterest and I will link that for you below. And I think it was a probably a much larger canvas, but I'm just kind of wanted to like experiment with a smaller one. I really kind of want to do more painting, like artistic painting. Um, so I just wanted to start with something small. So that's what I did. So mine's not exactly the same, but definitely inspired by it, and I love how this one came out. So I'm covering this canvas with crimson. Once again, the crimson from Waverly Chalk Paint, and I'm painting the edges as well. And I do give this a couple coats, once again, wanting a nice thick coverage. It only took like maybe one and a half coats um, just because the canvas was peeking through in a couple areas. So now I'm taking a fine tip paintbrush. I just did that little, little streak there just to kind of get a feel for how the paintbrush it's going to go and we're going to paint on a Christmas tree. Of course, you can do the color combos any way you want. The colors is very different than what was in the uh, inspiration piece. But I'm just kind of taking my time. This is quite a bit sped up. Um, but I was just kind of taking my time trying to not overthink it and just do, you know, smaller at the top, larger at the bottom. I didn't want too specific of like strokes because I wanted it to be natural like a Christmas tree and so I just do everything at an angle and just kind of take my time sorry my head my, my head pops in a lot um, during these because I was just you know super focused and just kind of kept going until I had I don't know the look that I wanted I did let it dry because I was afraid of overdoing it and like messing it up so at one point here I'm just like okay I'm gonna stop step back and I will come back to this once it's dried and then kind of do it again. But I kept everything going in the strokes, like at an angle like you would for a Christmas tree. So here I am coming back and just kind of fine tuning it and making some of those areas a little bit thicker, you know, that we can still see the red through a little bit. Um, this is way sped up, like I said. So take your time, um, but have fun with it. This was a lot of fun for me and I really hope to do more painting in the future. So here it is all finished, well the tree part's finished, and then I was like, oh I probably should paint the edge white that's like near the tree just so it looks, I don't know, that made sense to me. So this side and the bottom I painted with the white. So I guess I actually wasn't finished when I said I was just a second ago, um, but I'm just really just going and layering slowly but surely but to not like overdo it and mess it up and just kind of taking my time and making it, just going until I liked the finished product and how it looked. There's really no wrong way. The link um, it, that I have for you, I don't even know if there's instructions in it. I didn't follow instructions. I just use the picture as inspiration. All right, so now I was done with the tree. I let that dry and I'm just using the back of a, of a paintbrush like the end and taking various colors of paint and just making little dots for ornaments. I debated on just going with like gold and keeping it super like just red, white, and gold, which is really pretty. But I kind of went with some more bright colors. Um, I'm thinking I'll use this on my tiered tray or somewhere in my kitchen. I'm not positive yet, but I tend to go with a little bit more like whimsical color, full type things um, in that space. So I just went with some different colors that I had in my paint stash. These are all plaid products. I love plaid products. I am a plaid ambassador, but um, I have had plaid products long before they sent me any paints to try out. 
So um, definitely recommend. They do Waverly and um, Apple Barrel. I keep wanting to say Cracker Barrel. Um, but they do a lot of different brands that you're probably familiar with. Anyways, then I checked some white stickers that I had. These are from Hobby Lobby that I picked up on clearance, but you could use any stickers you have or you could stencil, freehand it, whatever you want. And I'm just putting on Noel. And then I'm going to just put a coat of Mod Podge, partially because the stickers weren't sticking super great on the painted canvas. But also I just like to do that because I feel like it helps seal in the paint so it doesn't chip off. And so we're just going to give a good coat of Mod Podge, which, by the way, that is also a plaid product which I did not realize um, until I had done a little research into them. So there's a little fun fact. And then once my canvas is all dry, I took two tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and I painted them white, hot glued them together, and then hot glued them to the back so that this would stand up. And I think this is really cute. This would be so pretty as a larger canvas. Maybe I'll try that next time. So I'm going to start with this round sign from Dollar Tree. This was from fall. I actually thought it was really, really pretty. It doesn't have any glitter on it. The bow is a little bit funky. Um, but anyways, I'm not using it for the beautiful sign. <laughs> We're just using it for the shape. So you can use any sign you've got. Took off the bow and took off the little hanger. And then I decided to try to peel off the paper, and I'm going to save you the uh, misery there. It didn't work, so it depends on the sign. Sometimes they come off easy, sometimes they don't. So I'm going to flip it over. We're going to use the back, and I'm going to just use some of this spackling, lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. I always forget what it's called when I'm doing the voiceovers, and I remember this time, so I'm very excited about that. Um, but this lightweight spackling to fill in the holes, and then once it dries, you sand it off, and then we're going to paint with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. My bottle is almost done, and I actually have watered it down a little bit because it got a little bit thick um, as I got to the bottom. So. I just poured that out. I am going to paint the edges and then I'm going to give the top part here. I, I think I gave it a total of two coats and I just kept my strokes going the same direction once, like the final coat. Sometimes I went different directions, but then I smoothed it out all in the same direction just to keep it finished looking. Um, so once or while that's drying, I'm taking this little Dollar Tree ornament sign thing. I don't know. It's a truck with a tree. These are at Dollar Tree this year. I actually picked mine up at a thrift store for 50 cents, <laughs> but um, I know that Dollar Tree has them again this year. So we're going to paint the truck red and I am just using acrylic paint here. I did one coat of everything and then some I ended up going back and doing a little bit extra where the wood was peeking through. So probably just going to depend on the paint you have. I've been saying I've been trying to use what I have on hand. I have so many paints in progress. So ones that are like almost done, um, I'm trying to finish them up so I can get rid of them before they get like, you know, they get chunky and all that stuff. So, so I'm just using a smaller fine tip paintbrush and we're going to do the wheels here. And you don't have to, you can do this of course any color you want. I honestly consider doing the truck white, um, but I ended up not but you could totally do any color that you wanted. So we're gonna give everything the appropriate coats of paint in the colors that we desire. And I was able to throw out a couple of paint bottles the last couple days, which was kind of exciting to me because I'm wanting to make room for new ones. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. Not only does that help me out, but when you subscribe and turn on that notification bell, that Make sure that YouTube will let you know when I post a new video so that you don't miss out on it because they're not necessarily going to show you all of the same things. Um, and sometimes, honestly, they don't always show you everybody who you subscribe to because I don't know why. I don't know why they do the things they do. Um, but it also helps let YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and it makes them more likely to share my videos with others. So if you would do that, that would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. So now I'm going in with a couple different colors of gray for the inside of the wheel. And the first one I did was just too dark. So I'm going back in with this lighter one. Just use whatever you have on hand. And again, I'm just using a fine tip brush to do my best to get a circle. It's not going to be perfect. Um, I'm not sure how you could do it perfect. I guess you could have a circle that you trace on there and then follow that. That might make it easier, but I'm perfectly happy with how this came out. And I did do a couple color couple coats of that because the dark underneath was really coming through. 
And then I am dry brushing with my stencil brush, some white paint, just kind of on the edges of things where snow would naturally fall. Um, oh, and I did paint this little spot in the back of the truck black. I think that's supposed to be like a light. Um, anyways, I did um, just add on a little bit of paint. Of, of course, it's paint. A little bit of white paint for the snow. So once both my coats on this round piece here are all um, dry, we're going in. I'm just using this level um, as a ruler, which is also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just drying drawing lines across with a pencil and then I'm going and smearing it or smudging it with my finger just to kind of make it not such a harsh line and make it look like some faux shiplap. And then I have this Merry Christmas stencil. I believe this is from Hobby Lobby. Dollar Tree has also had some nice stencils. Um, did I say Hobby Lobby? I think I did, yes. So this is, I believe, from Hobby Lobby. They have it again this year and they are not very expensive and their Christmas stuff is already at least 40% off. I haven't been in a couple of weeks, so it might even be 50 now. Um, so it's a nice one to, to pick up. They've got a lot of different ones to choose from. And I'm just using a pouncer brush and trying to not use too much paint on it so that we don't have any bleed through. And we're just gonna do that in this pretty red, I think it might be holiday red by Apple Barrel. Um, but yeah, we're just going to stencil that on. And now I'm just taking some ribbon. The one we're using is a red and white check, and that's actually from Dollar Tree at Valentine from Valentine's Day, but I picked it up because I was like, this can totally be used for Christmas. But um, I've also gotten black and white buffalo check and other pretty Christmas ribbons from Dollar Tree. And then I was also showing you the red and black one from Dollar General. Um, which was also only a dollar. So I'm gonna make a little hanger for this. You could also just put back in the old hanger or do a number of different things. But what I'm gonna do is hot glue on an angle each end of the um, ribbon. And I'm gonna hang this on a door and I'm gonna show you how I have it hung so you can, hopefully it'll all make sense. But um, we're gonna do that at an angle. And I was kind of holding up the ribbon to make sure that the angle was the right angle um, so that it wouldn't, you know, that it would be straight when it's all said and done. We'll come back to the ribbon in a second. I pulled out some white fleece I had in my stash to cover the back of this. You can also use some brown craft paper, craft paper from Dollar Tree. I am in need of some more of that. <laughs> so um, I'm using the felt and I'm just going to hot glue that around. It doesn't fully cover it up. Black felt probably would have been better as far as if you really need it to be like a clean, like you can't see anything. But um, I just did this so that I'm going to hang it on a door so that it'll just be a little bit smoother on the door because it's going to be hanging on a painted door and I just didn't want anything to get scratched up. And then you can see I had to kind of piece together to um, cover the whole, whole back here because I was just kind of using the scraps of felt I had on hand. Um, but we did that and then I wanted to trim it off and I tried using my cutting mat and a sharp cutting tool and that was just too fancy. It didn't work, so I just trimmed it off with some scissors. So now we're just going to hot glue on the wood uh, truck. Of course, not all points of the truck had contact with the sign, but um, I just tried to put it everywhere and put plenty of it so that hopefully, you know, enough points of contact were made. Um, just because there's a little bit of a 3D going on there, plus this sign was slightly bowed. You really can't tell until you're going to attach something to it. Anyways, we're going to hot glue that on. And then what I did was I held this up against the door, realized where these pieces would cross, glued them together, and then made a little bow to attach onto it. Again, I hope this makes more sense once you see it all finished. And my bow was really nothing fancy. It was just like a shoestring bow. So I cut off one more piece, glued that in half, and wrapped that around the middle just to look, make it look a little bit nicer, um, but still nothing fancy, just hot glued that around the center. Then we're just gonna hot glue that on to this point where the ribbons meet. And here it is all finished, hanging over a door. You don't have to do it this way. You could totally hang it differently if you wanted, but I love how this came out. And I just used a command hook on the inside of the door, upside down, and tied a loop at the top of the ribbon. It works great. All right, so this first one is not really hardly a DIY, but I picked up this little glitter tree from Dollar Tree and it lights up and it changes color, which isn't fully my uh, style, but I am going for a little bit more whimsical in my kitchen area. I have been over the years, so I decided to pick it up for that, and I just cut the tag off. Uh, well, the tag was gone, the plastic thing on the tag, and I'm just going to paint the base. I am using um, Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. 
uh, which is also by the company Plaid, along with these, trying out these new paintbrushes that Plaid sent me, and I absolutely loved them. They've sent me quite a few, um, but this is the first time I'm trying this pack here, and I really liked them. So all I'm doing is painting the base, because it was kind of just like an off-white color that didn't really match the tree. Um, and so I just thought, well, let me try doing that. So I let it dry in between. I did about two or three coats and just let it dry thoroughly in between. And yeah, that is it. So does this count as a DIY? I don't know, but I think it's really cute and I love the pop of the red and it's going to look really cute on my tiered tray. So for this next one, I have these mini tree cones from Hobby Lobby. They were six in a pack. They were $4.99, but they were 50% off. So for $2.50, we're going to just um, do two of them today. And I took out Christmas Green, which is an apple barrel color. And I am painting both of these with that. Now, in all honesty, when I first started this DIY, I wasn't totally sure. I had an idea, but I wasn't sure what, where I was going to land with it. So if I were to do these exact ones over again, I would paint one of these trees white and one of them green. But the whole point is so that if what we're putting on them shows through, I didn't want the cardboard showing through. So you can change that up based on what you end up deciding to do. So for the first one, I have these white little foam pieces and these glitter pieces. They are both from Dollar Tree. I think the white ones are called snow, like faux snow, and the red ones are called vase filler. I have already had them in my crafting stash for a while and I'm trying to work through my stash. So um, that's just what I had on hand, but I know that these things are still available at the Dollar Tree and these red glitter pieces, I believe they have in multiple colors. Anyway, this is the tree that I would have painted white if I had thought it through, but I'm just putting hot glue on and putting on these little white balls. So this is a little bit tedious, so I'm gonna speed it up, but I was watching Hallmark Christmas movies while I did it, so I didn't really care how long it took me. And um, this is sped up quite a bit. After a while, I decided a better route to take was to not mix the red ones in along the way and just do the white and then go back later and fill in any gaps with the red. So I did switch to doing it that way. So once I had the majority of this tree covered, I went ahead and filled in with some little red beads, or I think, it, like I said, I think it's called vase filler. And I also just made sure that as I was doing the ones around the bottom, that I that it wasn't gonna make like the bottom of it rocky, that it would still lay smooth on the table. But I just kind of kept going until I had the look I wanted. I did not cover every little gap. So once again, paint the cone white and it doesn't matter as much. But either way, I still like it. I think it's cute and whimsical and I definitely love traditional colors for Christmas. And like I said, these will probably be used in my kitchen where I go a little bit more fun and whimsy anyway. So this next one I am going to cover in bells. So I have these bells. These I believe were also from the Dollar Tree. I know that they have them. They have them in various sizes and they have them every year. So I did not buy any this year because I had plenty already in my stash. But we're gonna just do the same thing where I'm going to hot glue the bells all the way around and I'm just gonna kind of keep going alternating colors the best I can and you can see here again I'm skipping through a lot of this because we don't need to prolong this and have you see all of it but um, when I get to the bottom I'm just making sure that the bells aren't going to like make this rocky when I set it down on a table and then I did go in with those little red um, base filler balls again and filled in any gaps and um, that worked out really perfectly because they're very small I would recommend using a low temp glue gun because my fingers did come in contact with the glue on multiple occasions. And this is how they came out. I think they're super pretty and very fun and festive. All right, so we're gonna make some cone trees. I bought this four pack of poster board from the Dollar Tree, but you could also just buy a larger piece and cut it yourself. And I'm not gonna say that you should follow my directions on making the cone. There's probably people who are better at it than I am. I'm sure of it, that there are people better at it than me. But I tried this method, um, tied my pencil to a piece of string and held it at the point and drew a line and cut it out and then began rolling it up. It, I mean, I had to trim it again. It's not necessarily the greatest thing, but it, you know, I made it work. So however you want to do it, we're just trying to make some paper cones we're gonna make ourselves some more trees. So I tried taping it together. The key is to get the you know the point up at the top and then I, then I would go down from there. The tape didn't work super great, so I started putting on some hot glue 
and just kind of attaching that together. And then once I had that all into the cone shape that I wanted, I trimmed the bottom best I could so that it was pretty flat. And then, you know, that's the hard part. And it's not necessarily hard for everybody, but it kind of was for me. <laughs> Um, I had this yarn in my stash forever, but Dollar Tree does sell it. You can also buy it at Walmart or any craft store. Um, it's nothing nothing fancy. And I hot glued at the top. Now, I'm going to show you two of them. I did them two different ways, and I like the second one better. What I did here basically was put a line, and this is like way sped up, but I put a line of hot glue along the seam just for like added security there and then just kind of wrapped it around and I figured, oh, it's just holding in one spot. And that's enough. And it, it was and it wasn't. Um, by the end, it didn't look as great. Um, and of course, towards the bottom, I had to hot glue all the way around. Um, so I will add that in. But this seemed pretty quick. So what I would do is start by doing this and then wait till we get to the next one and I'll show you what I would do after I do this. But you can kind of see there, it's like, I don't know. It was drooping and bunching it. It just was, wasn't was wasn't great. But either way, you're going to wrap your cone with yarn. Um, I want to do another one with twine. I did not do that in this video. Um, I, I really would like that look as well. And then I have this beaded garland from our berry, beaded berry garland, or not beaded, berry garland. I told you guys, I've got like a sinus cold and I'm sorry, I'm not my best. Berry Garland from the Dollar Tree. They have it in multiple colors and I'm using the red one and wrapping that around, just hot gluing it at the top and hot gluing it at the bottom. And overall, this came out fine. Like I said, it's my first one and it wasn't as good as my second one. And I'll show you them both at the end. So I took the scraps from that first one and just made a smaller one and we're just gonna do the same thing, make it into a cone, glue it together and trim the bottom. So now, this time I'm using a red yarn and I'm hot gluing at the top. You have to do a, hot, a lot of hot glue kind of at the beginning and the end. But what I decided to do here, you'll see it um, in just a second, is I just kind of put squiggles of hot glue in like kind of all the way around and then wrapped it pretty quickly here. And I wanted more glue because like I said the last time, there was definitely not enough glue. Don't do too much hot glue because of course you don't want it to cool and harden before you wrap it. And I went pretty quickly here. I decided it was okay if there were gaps because we're gonna go back over the whole thing. So I like this method much better than my first one. So put quite a bit of glue all the way around, wrap it pretty quickly, keep it somewhat tight together, but you don't have to overdo it. And then once we got to the bottom, I, for some reason I cut off the yarn, so now I'm going back in. I guess I probably didn't need to do that. Could have just continued using the piece. But you can see there's still some gaps. So first I went around the bottom to just kind of clean that up and then I just kind of went hog wild. I went in different directions and of course I was going back over any of the white spots to fill those in and and sorry I kept going out of frame. I was so focused on this tree that um, I wasn't always focused as to whether or not I was staying in the frame. But I just went in all different directions up and down and then it's like purposefully not even if that makes sense. So I really liked how this one came out. Once again, finishing up around the bottom a little bit. Then we're gonna cut that off and just kind of tuck it underneath. And then this one, I'm going around with the gold berry garland. I actually meant to do the white because I do have it in white so that they were opposite, but I forgot. I do wanna make one more each of these. I want two white and two red, so I might change that out. But just once again, wrapped it around and hot glued it at the top and the bottom. And this is how they came out. I think they're super, super cute. And they'd be really nice in like a little bit of a set to do kind of like, I don't know, a mini forest or I don't know what you'd call it. But I really like how the one on the left, the red one, I feel like that came out a lot better with the way that the yarn was wrapped. And so that's what I would recommend personally. So for this next one, again, kind of a DIY, kind of not. We got these two pack of bottle, bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna do some white ones and some green ones. And then just various vase filler and things that I had on hand. I'm going back to the red um, beads or red balls and the bells is all I ended up using. But just use what you have on hand and look through the craft supplies. You know, at the store, if you don't have stuff on hand, you could do a variety. And all I'm doing is hot gluing in the white ones. I wanted the contrast of the red 
um, balls and I'm just hot gluing them at various places. And I do that in both the big one and the small one just so I had a little bit of a set. But those are just two for a dollar and then I'm just using things I already had on hand. So very inexpensive and I love decorating with trees because you can just sprinkle them throughout your decor. And if you go choose to go more neutral, you can really use them up for all of winter or I don't really care, leave the Christmassy ones up all winter long to each their own. Doesn't matter to me. And then the green ones, I decided to go in with the bells and I just thought that this was really cute and very simple and just a fun way to kind of spruce up these little tiny bottle brush trees. And Dollar Tree did have big ones this year and I actually found some, but I don't know if I'm gonna DIY them. I might just leave them as is. I haven't decided yet. And here they are. I thought they came out super cute and fun and whimsical. So just an idea for you to kind of switch things up a little bit. For this next one, I have this foam cone floral, I think it's a floral foam from the Dollar Tree, but you can pick them up at pretty much any craft store. And I wasn't sure which paint I was using. I'm trying to finish out some paints. I ended up just going with the chalk paint and from Waverly, just using up the last of this jar. And I'm gonna cover this with white paint. Now we're gonna go on a journey in this one because I almost left it out because I was not happy with it, but then I came back to it the next day and was able to redeem it, and I really actually think it's cute. Um, although if you hate glitter, you're going to hate this. Um, I don't mind the appearance of glitter, I mind the mess of glitter. Um, but we made, it, we made it work. So I'm gonna cover this with white paint, and we're going to then pour on some glitter. This is just some red glitter that I had on hand. I did not buy any specifically for this. And I just was using the paint kind of as a glue, because um, I did want to paint the styrofoam, because if any of it was I don't know, being seen, it looks like styrofoam. Hindsight, I, I wouldn't do it that way. Um, also, I would say if you don't like glitter, there is this like, I think it's called like tube glitter or something from Aldi and it's like bigger and that might be less annoying to work with. This is like really fine glitter. Um, so I'm just pouring it all over the place and then I didn't feel like it had a super great coverage. So the next day, I think this was the next day. I don't know. The last few days have been somewhat of a blur in my life, but I went back over it once it was dried and decided to go back in with some Mod Podge and put on some more glitter. And that definitely worked a lot better. Um, so I'm thinking, I don't know if I should have done Mod Podge from the beginning or if it just needed two layers of the glitter. Either way, if you want to attempt this, that would be my recommendation. Now, once this is fully dry, I went over it with some Mod Podge once again to just seal in the glitter, and this does really help a lot. Um, I did put it on very thick, so it took a little while to dry, but um, that does keep the glitter from making a mess afterwards. So, you know, if you can handle the mess of the glitter for the making of it, you don't necessarily have to deal with the glitter for, you know, forever after if you do this step. So now moving on to some embellishments for this tree. I have this little wood piece, which is from the Dollar Tree, along with these wood pieces, these wood shapes. They're little wooden Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna paint both of those with this metallic gold paint. And that is going to be our little accents for the top and the bottom of this tree. So just giving them each one coat of gold paint. And you can see there's still some white, but that's just because the Mod Podge hadn't fully dried at this point, but it was dried to the touch. It was just a little tacky. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue the little trunk to the bottom of our tree. I'm gonna go back and paint the bottom of that tree um, red, just so that it blends in a little bit more. I didn't think of it until I was doing this part here. And then I attached the little golden piece on top, and this is how the tree came out. I love the sparkle. Um, so it was a little bit of work, but was it worth it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's pretty cute. So here they all are, my little forest of trees. I hope you enjoyed all of these different little ideas to add some Christmas trees to your home decor. Okay, so for this snow globe, I just picked up one of the snow globes from the Dollar Tree. They're just like one of those little DIY ones. And I'm just using my hair dryer because I don't have a heat gun. Hair dryer works perfect for drying paint, but also for um, making those tricky labels and stickers to come off much easier and clean. And then I'm going to use this metallic paint. I believe that was by Folk Art. And we're going to give this lid or base, I guess it's the base, a couple coats of the gold metallic paint. I have to do, I think like three coats and I made sure to dry it in between. I'm also using this paintbrush. 
by Plaid. That's um, what I'm going to be using today. They sent me these paintbrushes and the ones I'm going to use on the next project. And I'm learning that a really good paintbrush can make a big difference. And so I definitely would recommend checking them out. Um, you can get them like at Walmart or on Amazon. You can get them a lot of different places. Once I got that all painted and it was drying, we're taking off this little plastic piece. That is what you're going to set anything on in the snow globe. And it does come with these little set of instructions if you want to follow what they're doing. I'm not, so I'm doing my own thing. And I have these little wood shapes from Dollar Tree. I was able to find them in the snowman and the tree. They also had them, I think, in angels. But you could also use the little miniature like village pieces that they have at the Dollar Tree as well, um, or little ornaments, really anything you can find. So this set of paintbrushes was awesome. It had a little picture on the back explaining which style paintbrush would help you do certain things um, to get a certain look, which is very handy for people who are not professional painters like myself. So I'm going in with, I'm using Holiday Green is the color. I believe that was by Apple Barrel. Um, and I'm just going to give this a couple of coats. I'm, I've said this a lot in the last few videos. I'm just trying to use up a bunch of paints that I have on hand that are kind of running low just to kind of move on to some new fresh paint. <laughs> so I just kind of pulled out colors that I thought would work from my stash um, that are that I'm kind of running out of. And now I'm doing the snowman in white because, you know, that makes sense. And then we're going to go ahead and do the hat in a black paint. I think I ended up choosing like a color pavement or something. Um, again, just trying to use up the ones that I was getting low on so that I can make room for new bottles of paint in my storage area. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It's something really simple and easy that you can do that helps me out so much. I would greatly appreciate it. Now I'm using this little tool from the Dollar Tree. I believe it's an embossing tool, um, but you could also use the back of a paintbrush or a toothpick. And I'm just making little dots in different colors to decorate the Christmas tree. And I'm just wiping it off in between with a damp paper towel. And I'm just, you know, just decorating it with little ornaments. These are just ideas of different things that you could do. And this is how I chose to do mine. And then when it came to the snowman, I'm just doing some eyes and nose and buttons in that same black paint that I used for the hat. And then I'm going to put on kind of like a triangle. Um, but anyways, it's a carrot nose. Um, and actually it came up pretty good. This little tool worked pretty well. And then once this is all done, I decided, or once I had the face all done, sorry, I decided to embellish the hat with some little berries and some holly leaves. And I can't really like paint or draw with the embossing tool, but I just kind of dabbed on the leaves to kind of look like leaves. And actually I was pretty pleased with how it came out for working with such a tiny piece. In the end, this isn't gonna be super noticeable in the snow globe, but I thought it would just be a fun little detail. And then I'm going to cover the base in Mod Podge just to seal in that paint so it didn't chip off of that plastic. And now we're gonna move on to the base. So I would do this differently, but what I did was painted it with white paint and put on some of this faux snow from the Dollar Tree. Now I would glue the other items on first and then go in with Mod Podge and the, the faux snow. And you're gonna see why. Um, when you do glue on the items, whatever you choose, hold them down and I, I pulled out some of the footage there, but hold them down until the glue is fully dry and hardened. But as you can see, it just came right up because of the layer of faux snow. So I just had to put more hot glue and held it down and it did eventually work. But I would glue everything down, then just go in with Mod Podge and a small paintbrush and put it in the faux snow afterwards. So that is my advice if you decide to do this. And you can use water, I think, in these globes, but I'm not doing that. I'm just going with the faux snow. I poured a little bit in the globe and then put in the bottom, screwed on the gold base. And then I decided it needed something else. So I have this green twine that I picked up at some point from Dollar Tree, but you could use some yarn or some ribbon. And I just wrapped it around a bunch of times. There was kind of this little gap between the bottom and the globe that just wasn't super pretty. 
So I'm just wrapping this around and we're gonna tie it in a simple knot. And then I had this little scrap piece of a red berry garland left in my stash that's also from the Dollar Tree. And it was the perfect size and I just wrapped it around and twisted it on itself. And that finished it off and I love how this came out. It's super cute and you could certainly put any number of things inside of this. And it's just a cute little accent piece for Christmas. All right, so this next one had me really excited. This is one of those tins that you would put like goodies in, baked goods. Um, I got did get it from the Dollar Tree, but I, as soon as I saw this one with the window, I knew I wanted to do something kind of like a snow globe. It's gonna be more like a winter scene, but you're gonna see how it's all gonna come together. So I'm going to Mod Podge the inside of this and put down some faux snow. And then I'm gonna let that fully dry. Once again, there's a couple things I would do if I did this again before doing the faux snow. So um, I'm gonna walk you through how I would do it differently, but I was able to make it work and I really, really love how this one came out. So we're just going to kind of coat the inside until all of the Mod Podge is kind of covered with that faux snow. And then we'll just shake off the excess and let that dry. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you be a part of my YouTube family. I love sharing a budget-friendly DIYs with you. So make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos. And be sure to keep an eye on my community tab because I'm gonna be doing a craft with me live making some um, Christmas ornaments before too long. And I will be announcing the details of that on my community tab. Okay, so now we're going for the inside, and I took this vase filler. They had these white, I had bought the white and silver ones, but I'm just pay, taking out the white um, balls and gluing them together with some hot glue to make little snowmen. Once again, hold it together because it, you really need to hold it firmly until the glue hardens. And then I'm taking this black floral wire, also from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna twist it together and make little snowman arms. It came out super cute, but I will say in the end, you really can't see them too much in the finished product, but I would definitely use this again for maybe making some snowman ornament when you want some arms. Um, and once again, what I'm putting inside of my little snow scene, you can use anything you want, mini ornaments, you can make stuff, you can, um, Walmart has lots of stuff, Hobby Lobby has lots of stuff, Dollar Tree, um, Hobby Lobby has a great like miniature section so do with it what you want but I'm just going to make little arms and I put a little hot glue and then shoved them in because these are like styrofoam type of balls and then I've got these fairy lights also from the Dollar Tree so what I would do is I would attach the lights to the inside and then do the Mod Podge and faux snow but what I ended up using was this double-sided like foam tape and it didn't stick super great just because of the faux snow. So I put some hot glue on it, pushed it in there firmly till it dried because you're also gluing onto metal. And then I just kind of took the wire and stuck it to the other side with the stickiness. But um, I ended up taking, I didn't show this. It's kind of hard to show you what I'm doing. I tried to like, get different angles, but then I was having trouble doing it. But um, some of them, I would take another piece of the foam sticky stuff and put it on top of the wire so the wire was sandwiched between two pieces. And then I just sprinkled a in a little faux snow to kind of cover it up. But it's white anyway, so it blends in. And I just do this all the way around the perimeter of this tin. So I hope that all makes sense. Maybe it'll make more sense when you see the finished product at the end. All right, so now I have these white ornaments from the Dollar Tree, these little white trees. Now I filled in the hole, I didn't want the hole to be seen. I filled it in with hot glue because I just kind of had that on hand and then with whatever was kind of on the top, I sprinkled on some faux snow to kind of cover up the hole. Um, but you could just use Mod Podge too, but my hot glue gun was turned on and next to me. So I did that on both of them just to cover up the hole. And then I'm going to hot glue this and um, attach this inside. And I do this with both of them and I would just say use plenty of hot glue and make sure to hold it down until it's all the way dry. Once again, I feel like a broken record, but because you're going through a little bit of faux snow, plus it's on the metal, you just wanna make sure that it fully attaches before you let go of it. And I had these two overlapping just a little bit um, because I didn't do them all the way to the edge. But once again, use whatever you find or whatever you have on hand for this. You could totally do a different type of scene inside, but, um, this is what I chose. And then I picked up these little bottle brush trees from 
Dollar General, they were only a dollar, and Dollar Tree has a variety of them too, which I've also picked up, but this one was a three pack and it fit perfectly. So that's what I used for this one. And once again, you're going to hot glue it, holding it down firmly until everything is fully attached. If you see this messed up spot on my table, that is because I have destroyed this table using for do, doing DIYs in the past. And um, yeah, I usually cover my work surface now, but I didn't really need to for this one. So you kind of have that ugly, ugly spot in the shot, but that's all right. And then we're going to do the same thing with these little snowmen. And I just kind of place them in here. And this is where the arms kind of disappear. You don't really see them as much with the trees, but um, once again, Holding, holding them down until they're fully hardened on. And that completes the little scene inside. And now what we're gonna do is just attach the battery pack on the back and I'm hot gluing it to the bottom. I didn't wanna do the top cause I didn't wanna make it like top heavy. And I made sure that the screw was facing out so I can change the batteries obviously. But you don't even necessarily have to attach it if you don't want to. You could just set it on the table or surface when you're done. And the wire is nice and thin so you can put the lid on top and here it is all finished. I just love how this came out. I think it's so cute. And I love things that light up for Christmas time. There's just something warm and cozy. And this really could be used for the winter. So it just depends on what you decide to put inside of your little snow scene. For this first one, I picked up these really pretty gold frames from Dollar Tree. I love that they're not just signs, they're frames with the little stand on the back. And then I have these little wood pieces. The snowflakes, I think, are ornaments, and the let it snow is just word cutouts, I think is what they're called. And I pulled out one of each. The white one, or the, sorry, the snowflake is an ornament, so it's got a little hole in it. So I'm using this lightweight filler, or white, lightweight plaster, white, Lightweight something is what it's called. Anyways, it's from the Dollar Tree. I filled it in. Once it dried, I sanded it down. That's what that little hand motion was showing you. And then I have this metallic gold paint from Folk Art. And I'm going to paint both of these with some gold paint. Now, obviously, paint everything whatever colors you want that matches, you know, with your decorating. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out so much. And consider subscribing if you're new. I love sharing budget-friendly DIYs with you and a lot of Dollar Tree items, although not exclusively, but just budget-friendly and easy. So I'd love if you would consider subscribing before you leave. So I ended up doing pretty much just one coat on this, but that's going to depend on what paint you're using and what color you're using and what look you're going for. So nothing big, just give it a good coat of paint. And then I picked up these bags. They came in a two pack from the Dollar Tree and I thought they were really cute and we're gonna use both of them. That way they kind of go, but they're not necessarily matchy. And I'm just going to take the back out and we're gonna cut ourselves out a piece of this to fit inside the frame. And I'm just going to try to very carefully take the handle off here. I didn't want anything bulky. So just take your time so they don't tear the outside of the bag but you can um, take this off fairly easily. And then I'm going to just trace it and trim it down to the exact size. Now I am not painting my frame, um, but you certainly can if you want, and you could use a rectangle frame instead of a square frame. Just make sure that, I picked these up at the same time so I could make sure that the frame and the picture, or the, the bag would you know fit inside of it. So what I'm doing is actually using a glue stick to glue the bag to the glass. I don't I want the glass in the front, I just want the paper, but I knew that I needed something a little bit more sturdy and hard. So this is what I did. You could also just cut out a piece of like poster board or something, but I am just using a glue stick, gluing the paper to the glass, and I'm gonna use this little scraper tool uh, because you use anything or nothing, but just help smooth it out. I could pick that up from the Dollar Tree as well. I think it's supposed to be like a Cricut tool or whatever, but I don't know. I don't have a Cricut. And once that was um, nice and on there, we're going to put everything back in the frame. I just put all those little extra pieces in there too, just, I don't know, for good measure. Put our frame back together. And I did that for both of them. And now we're going to use some wood glue and we're going to attach our embellishments to the front. And that's why I didn't want the glass. I just, I didn't want the glossy finish. And I knew I couldn't put these embellishments behind the glass because it wouldn't fit because they're bulky. So I'm using uh, wood glue. It does dry clear. So that was one of the reasons I liked this one. You can use whatever you want, um, whatever works best for you. It seems like 
because a lot of times people have their favorite glue of choice. And I thought I was going to be done with this, but I happened to find this uh, gold fabric paint in my box, and I, it's kind of like puffy paint, so I added that on, but apparently I did not record that. But I just added that onto the snowflake and the little snowflake on Let It Snow, and I love how these came out. Super cute and simple. So this next one, also super simple. I picked up these little houses. They're little tea light holders from the Dollar Tree. They came in red, green, and then I actually found after I picked these up that they also came in like a galvanized color. I probably would have picked that color up, but I'm kind of glad I got the red because I do like the pop of color. And all I'm going to do is put some Mod Podge on top and use some more of that faux snow that I've used in my other DIYs and attach that to the roof. And that's going to be it. But I do want to just show you a little bit of how I'm doing that. So I'm doing a layer of Mod Podge and then we're going to pour the snow on, tap it on, tap it kind of into it and let it dry thoroughly. And then I came back the next morning um, or just a few hours later, whatever, whatever works for you, and did another layer. I did a thick, thick layer of Mod Podge and more snow because I wanted a full, full coverage. And then you can also go back afterwards and add another thick layer of Mod Podge on top of the snow to keep it from like shedding. But when you do a thick layer like that, you are going to have to give it a good amount of time to dry. So just keep that in mind. And this is how they came out. I thought they were super cute and fun and not really a whole lot to it, but a nice way to just kind of spruce them up a little bit, give them a little sparkle for the Christmas season. For this first one, I have this ornament sign from the Dollar Tree. I've just taken off the tags and then I'm going to use my little putty knife to, I think that's what that is, right? To just slide that under to um, take off the little metal topper. I was just trying to be careful. It actually came off really easy once I got that in between there because um, we're going to use that again. And I'm going to flip it over. We're going to paint this with some white acrylic paint. I've been saying this for a while now. I'm using up some paints that I've got in my stash, so that's why that whole thing is going on. Um, you also can paint or cover the backside with paper. I don't show you this in this video, but if you want to make sure that's finished, that is a good option. I will be doing that. I actually haven't done it yet, but I will. And we're just going to give this a good coat of paint. And I even though it was only acrylic paint, I still think it only... Oh, maybe it took me two coats. I honestly don't remember, but make sure you let it dry in between. And then I have this Merry Christmas little wooden cutout from the Dollar Tree. It came in a three pack. And we're just going to paint this with some red paint. I, with these little cutouts, I like to use a stencil brush and like dab off some of the paint because I feel like if you have too much paint and use a regular brush, it gets into all of those cutouts and then you can't really see the cutouts. And I didn't want like red paint gloppy in the you know, the letters. So uh, this is what I, you'll see I use this for another cutout later. I just feel like that works well. And then I have these wooden stickers. These are from the Dollar Tree. I had these from previous years, but I have seen them again this year. And I'm just taking off the little sticker piece. And then we are going to Mod Podge and put on some faux snow from the Dollar Tree and just let these little snowflakes sparkle. Now, I don't show all of the layers of this, but I like to do it in two layers. I feel like you get better coverage with the snow. So I put down some Mod Podge, put on some of the snow, let it fully dry, then do another layer of Mod Podge with more snow, and that's the coverage that I wanted. And then when that was all dry, I did put another thick layer of Mod Podge on top of the snow. And that takes a little while to dry, but that will keep it from shedding all over the place. So you don't have to do that, but I do recommend it. So just letting you know all of those little steps because I, I didn't want to you know, make this video too long and show you all of that. So now I'm taking these window clings. These are actually from Walmart. They were 98 cents, and we're gonna use um, one of these. For this one, I pulled off a snowman. At first, maybe I, th I thought I was gonna be able to put two of them on there, but they didn't fit. So we went with just this one, and I was just trying to make it, make sure it fit with this banner and all of that before I put things down. And then I took some Mod Podge, and we're just going, I'm going to actually cover like the whole thing because I want everything to have the same finish. Um, put the snowman down and then Mod Podge over it. You can see at the very top of the ornament, I didn't paint that. And then I actually did go back and paint that because even once I put the little metal piece back on, you would be able to see that a little bit on the edges. So just mentioning that for you. And this did not have any bubbles really. I went over it a few times with the brush. 
um, until the Mod Podge became a little bit tacky. I put too, Mod Podge, too much Mod Podge. Um, but then once it started getting tacky, I the bubbles kind of didn't start to happen underneath there. So the window clings will work really, really easy for DIYs. And then I Mod Podge the edges because why not? All right, now we're going to go ahead and embellish this. So I'm going to put some hot glue down and we're going to put the metal piece back on. I put the hot glue on the um, sign rather than the metal because it tends to cool very quickly when it hits the metal. So I wanted it, the time it hit the metal was when I was in the place it needed to be, if that makes sense. And then I'm using wood glue and hot glue for this banner piece. I don't know that that's necessary, but I knew that there was all these little openings and I didn't want the hot glue to be in there and like be seen. So I did the wood glue on more places because that dries clear and then just put a little bit of hot glue in some of the more, the larger spaces that there weren't cutouts. I hope I'm making sense. I'm doing the same thing for the snowflakes and I'm just attaching those on as well. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That is a very easy way to help my channel out. It lets YouTube know that you are enjoying it and makes them more likely to um, share my video with others. Same thing when you comment and subscribe. All of that activity on my channel helps me out so much. So now we're going to add a little bit of embellishment on the top. I have one of these garland ties. They are from the Dollar Tree. Hobby Lobby also sells them. Walmart might was as well. I'm not totally sure, but I know Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby have them. And I just cut them into pieces and we're going to hot glue them on for a little bit of greenery. These little silver glittery balls are from a vase filler package from Dollar Tree, um, but you could also do some bells or a little ornament or whatever really that you have on hand that you like. And then I have this ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and I liked this because it kind of matched the little ribbon on the snowman's hat, and we are just going to loop this through, and you could do this any way you want, but I'm going to hang it. I'm going to show you here over my pantry door. And I have a command hook on the inside of the door, upside down, and I just feed this up over the top of the door and hook it onto the command hook. So that was that one. So this next little box, little book box thing is from the Dollar Tree. They had them in a few different styles. And we're just gonna paint it in red. I'm gonna make, we're gonna be making a stacked book set thing. Um, I don't know if that's the way to, right way to call it, but I'm painting it red because obviously I wanted the whole thing to be the same color red and I needed to paint the top. So I'm just using some acrylic paint and the whole thing I only did one coat. I did not paint the bottom, um, but I painted all of this with one coat except for the top, which did take probably three or four coats. You could also just use um, the Waverly chalk paint in crimson would work as well. But once again, working through some of these paint this paint that I'm just trying to use up. Uh, I do have the crimson on hand, but I was trying to use up some of my acrylic paint. Um, just make sure you let it dry thoroughly in between coats. I did use my hair dryer on a low setting in order to dry that in between, so it didn't take me very long. Then I taped on the edges here. Now, I don't know. I was trying to make the lines for the books, so I did some white paint and topped it with a little bit of brown paint. I was just trying to give it a softer look than just like a harsh line from a marker, but if I were to do this again, skip the painter's tape, take a ruler and a fine tip permanent marker or fine tip marker of some kind and just draw the lines because this ended up peeling off some of the paint. The painter's tape did, so I had to go back in and touch it up. It worked out okay, but probably not necessary. You could also paint or draw the lines around the whole bo uh, box if you wanted for the to, sh to make it look like there's three books, but I did not. I just did this part here. Now I'm using these stickers I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I got them on clearance for like 62 cents, I think that says, or 67 cents, but you can use any stickers or stencils or freehand it or your Cricut, whatever you want. Put whatever words you want. Um, you, there's so many different options. You can look on Pinterest for some ideas if you're kind of, you know, having a hard time coming up with something. But I'm just going to put Merry and bright, we're gonna keep that really simple. I wanted to Mod Podge over these stickers to make sure that they stayed on really well. And then I just Mod Podge the whole thing just so that everything had the same finish. And then we're going to take some ribbon and twine and wrap that around. I didn't put any um, embellishments on top because I'm probably gonna put a little tree or something on top when I use this. So I kept it simple and just tied it around and put a bow and I love how this came out.
For this next one, I have this little snow globe sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut off the ribbon or twine, and then I am gonna sand this. I did not show you me doing that, sanding it off all the glitter um, and trying to make sure nothing showed through when I painted it. And we're going to paint the top part here once again with some white acrylic paint. This took a couple coats. The rest of it only took one coat, but this top part here with the white paint took, I don't know, two or three coats of paint. And then I, you don't necessarily have to use a painter's tape. I don't know, I was into painter's tape when I was doing these. And we're gonna paint the bottom part um, black or I think I'm using the color pavement. You're gonna see it's like hardly anything left in this, in this bottle. Um, I end up having to, anyways that's neither here nor there. Whatever color you want, but I wanted to do um, in a dark color. And then I'm also gonna use the same color to paint the whole perimeter of the snow globe as well. I didn't want that MDF color. I didn't, I didn't like how that looked. I have another one of these word cutouts from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna do the same thing with the red once again. I do a pretty thorough coat on it, but I just dabbed it off of the paintbrush so that we didn't have any globs of paint in you know in all of these letters so this method works really good so i'll probably continue doing it for these small little intricate um cutouts and then i'm going to take some more of this window cling that we used earlier i'm going to take some of the snowflakes and we're going to put these on um on the snow globe and then once i have out what i want we're going to just use some mod podge just like we did before we're going to mod podge the bottom and then put these on top and mod podge over and I will mod podge the whole thing. How many times can I say mod podge? Um, just so that everything has the same finish. And you can either use matte or glossy mod podge, whatever you want. Um, I kind of alternated between what I had, you know, between the projects I decided what I wanted to use, but doesn't matter. Now we're going to attach this and once again, I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue and some hot glue just because it's hard to get the hot glue on some of those small little spaces. So that's the route I chose to take, but you could use, and I don't know, there's a bunch of adhesives out there. You could use super glue. Um, I think there's a gel super glue that's got a nice fine tip from Dollar Tree. Anyways, we're gonna glue that on, and then I decided I wanted to wrap the bottom with some ribbon. This glittery ribbon is from the Dollar Tree, and um, it worked really good. It was perfect. I did two strips of it around the base, it is a very sheddy, sheddy. It sheds the glitter. I'm not sure how to say that properly. Um, so I did go over the ribbon once it was all on with some Mod Podge just to seal in that glitter because it was coming off really bad. And I just, I don't, I don't mind the look of the glitter. I just didn't want, you know, try to minimize the mess of the glitter if possible. And this is how it came out. I think it's really cute. I love the pop of the red and it's super simple and easy to do. Speaking of simple and easy to do, this next one is hardly a DIY. I have this sign from the Dollar Tree, which was actually pretty cute uh, in and of itself, but we're just going to take off the plastic and I somehow busted one of the corners. So a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue, which is kind of out of frame and we fixed that right up. So that is no big deal. And then I have this little ornament sign from Dollar or from Walmart for 98 cents. They had so many of these that were super cute. And we're just gonna cut off the hanger and we're going to glue this on top. We're not even taking off that thing underneath. We're just going to put it right over it because it fit perfectly. And some wood glue and some hot glue. Again, don't know if both are necessary, but I like to. But I, that sign is really cute by itself. Leftovers are for quitters, super cute. And then there's the little hole from the where you would hang the ornament. So I'm gonna make a little finger bow. Finger bow. I have it sped up, but just thought I'd try to show you what I'm doing. I'm not an expert at bows, but wrapping it around my four fingers, cutting a little piece, and I slide that in between in the middle and tie that. And then once I slide the bow off of my fingers, I make sure that the loops on either side are even before I tighten it and tie it in a knot. And then we're going to trim off the little tails and that's kind of it. Super easy, basic finger bow, um, nothing fancy. And then we're just gonna hot glue that on, covering up the, ho the, the hole and ties it all together. Really cute sign, love how this came out. Very easy, you know, just glued something from Walmart on top of something from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> all right, moving on to the next one. I have these wreath hangers from the Dollar Tree and we are gonna to try to bend off this top part 
and sorry that one wasn't totally in frame. So this works out pretty easy. What you do is bend it down first and then I'm bending it back out, trying to flatten it. And um, then once I, let's see, I tried to leave a lot of this in here just so I could show you how I did it. Uh, okay, so then I'm bending it up and that seemed to have a lot of resistance, but when I bent it back down again, it actually just kind of broke off. It was pretty easy. So this is not hard to do at all. I did try to sand down the edges, but it's metal. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit rough. And I'm gonna show you this one again, just because I think I got this in camera a little bit better, but it's not hard. This is not sped up at all. So you can see it really doesn't take long to do this. And we're gonna do that on two of them because we are going to make a little sleigh and these are going to be the runners for the sleigh. I have this little bucket that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and we're going to paint it in some Waverly chalk paint in the color white. So I am going to tell you what to do differently. Um, give this a coat of Mod Podge first. It will help the paint stick better and I knew that and totally forgot. So I definitely recommend that. I painted the inside and the outside and I did a few coats. Um, you could also spray paint it. That might work better. There were a few learning curves on this. Um, sometimes when I'm in the middle of a project, my like brain leaves me and then when I get done, I'm like, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? So I get to tell you the things that I would do differently. So give a coat of Mod Podge, let it dry, then begin painting with the white paint. Sorry for the lighting when I was doing these DIYs. I had my blinds closed, but sun kept peeking in. And anyways, it got darker, lighter. I'm gonna cut, uh, paint these little cutouts. I've got a Let It Snow and I'm gonna do a couple snowflakes too in the color Crimson from Waverly Chalk Paint. And I shared this in my last video. For these little cutouts, when there's all of these little pieces, I find that a stencil brush works best even if I go over it a few times to make sure it has full coverage. But that way you don't get any globs of paint in between all of the little crevices on these. This just works best from what I have found. So just something to think about. You could also stencil the sleigh, but we're gonna just attach these on. So we're gonna give these a coat of paint. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That is a very easy way to help support my channel. And of course, it costs you nothing, but it does help me out a lot. Also, say hello in the comments. Leaving comments also helps me out as well. So now that everything is painted, we are going to attach this. I, I had issues here. I'm using super glue. I don't like using super glue. This stuff is messy and I had some issues with it. Um, I ended up going in with some wood glue. It came out quick here, so I was like, oh, let me just hurry up and put it down, but then it wasn't on all of the edges, so it didn't work, and... Okay, use whatever adhesive you would like. You could use hot glue, you could use wood glue, you could use glue, crazy glue. I have not picked it up yet, I don't think, but the uh, Dollar Tree does carry a gel super glue, which I think would be better, because it wouldn't run all over the place. So here you can see I'm going in with some wood glue. I like that because it dries clear. Um, but this was a pain in the butt. Then, if you can see at the very bottom of the snowflake here, there is a chunk of paint missing by the snowflake. And that is because I super glued my finger to the sleigh. And when I pulled it up, it pulled off the paint. So, don't do that. Um, I end up going in and touching that up. I put a layer of Mod Podge to kind of seal down the edges of the paint. And then I went back over with some chalk paint. So, I patched it up but that was a struggle. You can see I literally have paint super glued to my hand. So we finally got them attached. That was a little bit of a labor of love, but that was just because I had glue issues. Now we're going to attach the sleigh to the runner and I am choosing to use some mounting tape, super glue mounting tape. This stuff is permanent. Um, so just be sure of where you're putting it. I've never used it before, but I thought with the metal and the plastic and outdoors, I just wanted something really good. So I'm using these mini clamps just to pinpoint where I needed to put the tape down. So this was just something I had on hand. So I was just kind of marking where I wanted to, to put the tape and then we're going to roll the tape out. And one, it's double-sided, so I'm just gonna attach it with one side, then we'll peel off the top and then attach the sled. Or sleigh. It's a sleigh. This is a sleigh, not a sled. Sled is something you go down the hill on in the, when it's snowy, and a sleigh is 
something you do with a one horse open sleigh, right? Okay, sorry guys. I think I've been um, um, working on this a little too long and I'm starting to lose my mind. I don't know if I had to leave all of this in, but you wanted to show you how it worked. Just made sure everything was in place because I knew that once it was attached, that was it. There was going to be no going back. But that did work really well, and I'm filling mine with some ornaments. I might add in some greenery. Once again, not fully done outside, but I wanted to show you how I would be using it. Last but not least, we're going to do a mat. I have done doormats many times. This time, I am going to also show you my struggles, trying to get it centered here, and then we're going to paint it, use some paint. I'm just using Waverly chalk paint. I never have issues with using that or even just acrylic paint. Doormats don't last forever anyway because they're out in the elements and all of that, but I never have problems with the paint coming off. So my problem with this, you're using a stencil brush, you're, you've got to dab it on. It looks like there's plenty of paint, but it's not getting in the stencil. So part of the problem with this one, I think, was that the stencil, a lot of the stencil had really narrow lettering and it just wasn't working. I tried a couple of paint brushes and the other problem it's always hard on a mat because it's textured, but this one is not all one layer, like those different colored lines. You can see that did not, that does not look good. But um, they are raised, they're raised parts. So we're flipping it over. We're gonna try it on the other side with my Merry Christmas stencil, which is a nicer stencil. And this worked much better. So I would just, I don't know. Next time I'm gonna look for a mat at the Dollar Tree that does not have um, the different layers. It's not like raised in any part. I don't know why I didn't think about that, but um, I've also done this with those like really stiff bristly mats as well, and you can do it. It comes out great. You just have to be patient, and you do have to use lots of paint, but you also don't want to let it, because it has to like get into the fibers of the mat, but you also don't want it to bleed on your stencil, but I've done it many times. Okay, that worked. So now we're going to go in with some white paint, and we're going to do snowflakes all over, and in the end, this ended up coming out really, really cute. But I, you know, it's a dollar, so I figure try something. And if it doesn't work, you're only out a dollar. Um, and if it works, then you've got something really great. So that's what I did. And I did know that I had a mat, a larger mat to layer this with, because these ones are pretty small from the Dollar Tree. But layering mats is kind of like in anyway. So I just went with it. If you are new, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave and make sure your notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out on my future videos. And here it is. This is how it came out. Again, sorry kind of for the lighting, but I just layered over matte I picked up from Aldi. All right, so for this first one, I have one of these little cloches from the Dollar Tree and I previously used this in another DIY. I just painted the bottom white and it uh, comes black so you can do it however you want. And then I have these little trees and these little bows. The bows are from the Dollar Tree. I think these trees were from the Dollar Tree, but I picked some up from both the Dollar, no, it looks like they were from Dollar General. They were a dollar. But I picked them up from both Dollar Tree and Dollar General this year. And I am just going to attach these little bows. They come with little twist ties. I just kind of cut that off um, close to the bow. And I'm gonna hot glue that on to the tree. This is like hardly a DIY, but I guess it is. So I'm going to hot glue these three trees on here. Now, um, I feel like I can still pull them off if I want to change this up and use it for another season, but that was it. Put the lid back on. I wanted to show you where I was displaying it in my home, and this whole little shelf has lots of DIYs, so I will have my Christmas DIY playlist for you if you want to check it out and get some more DIY ideas. Okay, so for this first one, I have a large canvas from Dollar Tree and this wooden tree. I don't know exactly what it's, if it's called a hanging ornament or whatever. Anyways, from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut the string off of that and we're gonna use the lightweight spackling to fill in the hole and give that a chance to dry. And then we are going to unwrap our canvas and give it a good paint, good coat of paint. I am using Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm going to paint the whole front of it and just the edges so that when it is leaning up, or hanging up, however you decide to do it, you'll only see the black. Now, I don't do a lot of black typically, but I, I do like black and white checkered, and so I thought black and white might be really pretty 
for the winter and it's easy to work into different style of decor. You could certainly work it into like modern, also with some like farmhouse and rustic depending on what you add with it. So that's what we're going with. And there my canvas is all painted black and now we're going back to our tree and we're gonna go in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I'm just showing you I had sanded off where I had filled in the hole and we're going to give this a coat of the white paint. Once again, I do go over the edges as well and um, I do pretty much everything but the trunk. Let me know down in the comments, what do you do as far as your Christmas decor? Do you take it down pretty quick? Do you leave it up for a while? Do you decorate for winter or do you go straight to like your regular decor after Christmas comes down? What do you like to do? So now I'm just gonna go in with the trunk with some antique Waverly in the color, or antique wax, no. Waverly wax in the color antique. I knew I would get it out. Um, but you could also just use some brown paints. And now that the tree is fully dry, we're gonna go in with some Mod Podge. I went a little heavy. I know, I know, I did kind of scoop some of it off. And we're gonna pour on that faux snow. I've been using that a lot this year and I really like it. It is kind of messy but um, it's not too bad once you get it on. So we're gonna Mod Podge the whole thing. I'm using a little bit of what I had left over of another bag. And I'm gonna put it on pretty thick. I'm just kind of spreading it out and patting it in very lightly, but we're gonna go pretty thick on this and um, just go until everything is fully covered. I'm not doing the trunk here. Um, we're just gonna do the tree portion. So we've got like a winter tree. And then we are going to let that dry and then we're gonna shake off all of the excess. Now, this step does take a little while because you wanna let everything dry fully in between. Um, so that's just a little heads up for you. And if you wanna do a second layer of the snow, just again, let it dry really well and then go in with a little bit more Mod Podge. I'm doing a little bit here just on the edges where I had missed, but if you wanna do like a full coat, I would wait till everything is dry. Once it is fully dry, we're going to go in with a thick, thick coat of the Mod Podge. Now I do this so that it's not flaking off constantly. This is going to take a while to dry. I let it dry overnight. Um, it's We're gonna go in pretty thick here. So that's just my tip. If you wanna use this on something and you don't want it like kind of shedding everywhere, that is what I would do. Um, and that's worked pretty well for me so far. So now that everything is dry, I'm gonna use some Gorilla wood glue along with some hot glue on the back of my tree. Now my tree, I don't know if you could tell earlier when I was painting it, it was a little bit bowed, not totally flat. So I'm gonna just be careful when I'm pressing it down to try to get it to flatten out and it worked just fine. But we're gonna use wood glue for a longer hold and some hot glue for the immediate hold. And I just wanted to make sure this wasn't gonna come falling off on me. So we're just gonna lay this down on our black canvas, a nice black background to let the white really pop out. And like I said, just press that down, make sure you get the hot glue to hold really good before moving on. And then I have these pretty white glittery snowflakes from Dollar Tree. They are really good stickers. The first one I did hot glue and then I was like, this is an extra step that's not necessary. Um, then I'm just dealing with more hot glue strings. <laughs> so I'm just going to stick them on, uh, not a ton of them, but just a few of them. So we kind of have a little snowy background. And I'm gonna show you how this looks um, at the end because I end up displaying it with our next DIY. Speaking of the next DIY, I have these houses. They came from Target Dollar Spot or Target Bullseye. Um, they were, I think, $5 for the pack of three. And then I'm using some paintbrushes sent to me by Plaid along with some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, which is also a Plaid product. And I'm finding that you don't have to have expensive paintbrushes, but you, good paintbrushes do make a difference <laughs> when you're doing detail work. You don't have to be a painter. So I wanted to give these a try and I was very pleased with them. I've used some of them in the past, but I've got quite a few to choose from. So I wanted to pull them out for this project. And so we're gonna paint the outside edges of all of them in the black and I only really had to do one coat. I'm just going carefully around the chimney here. And we're gonna do that on all three of them. I paint everything except for the bottom edge because that's just gonna be sitting down on a counter. And it's a nice wood, so I don't feel like it really looks unfinished, but you can do that if you want. These wood houses were not super, um, like they were kind of rough around the edges. So if you want, you could sand them, but I left them as is. And if you can't find these from Target, you could get the ones from um, Dollar Tree, they aren't quite as, although I guess they're about as thick, um, and they don't have the chimney, but you could easily add something on for the chimney or do them without the chimney, your call. 
So now we're going to paint the front and back. I do both sides. I don't do these reversible. I have done some reversible wood houses, which I will have linked for you. I'll try to remember to link that video for you, maybe up in the iCard, um, popping up on the screen here, um, or down in the description box. But you could easily do these reversible if you want, but I'm not, but I am gonna paint both sides of them just so that they're finished. Um, so I guess technically they're reversible, but I'm just painting the back. There's nothing being added to it. Anyways, you'll see in a second. So we're painting one of them with white, and then I've got this white scrapbook paper with some black polka dots. This is from Hobby Lobby. I don't know, I picked it up a while ago, and I'm just tracing it. I'm not tracing it exactly. I want it to be a little bit over the edge because I feel like this method gets me a cleaner edge than if I were actually trace it exactly to the right size. So I'm just gonna put some Mod Podge. I'm not gonna go too heavy on this, and we're going to then lay our scrapbook paper on top of it and smooth that out really good. Get the Mod Podge to the point where it's not dry, but it's you know a little bit in that tacky stage. And we've made sure that there's no bumps. You can use like a credit card or a scraping tool or popsicle stick or something to smooth that out. And then I'm also kind of creasing along the edges as you see here, so that it's doing that as it dries. Um, once again, I'm gonna do this for the other side just so that they're both finished. And then once both sides are done, we're going to Mod Podge on the top not going too heavy. I don't want it to get all wrinkly. Um, these actually came out really nice. Um, I did not have any like wrinkling and bubbles issues. So um, I don't know, whatever I did really worked well this time. <laughs> and then we're gonna do our third house in black. So I'm not gonna show you all this, but painted both sides black. Once our house and the Mod Podge was dry, I'm just using a sanding block from Dollar Tree. And as you can see, just sand kind of away. You don't wanna pull the paper up. Um, but you'll get a nice crisp line. I switched and got a new sanding block because my other one was falling apart on me as I was doing it. Um, but just get a nice clean edge this way, so I really like this technique. And now I'm gonna do not a lot of embellishments, but just a little bit. I've got, um, for my black house, I've got this little snowflake. This was one of those snowflake stickers from Dollar Tree in a pack with some other things. Um, and I painted it white and I pulled the sticker part off the back because I didn't want you to be able to see that through the center hole. You could kind of see the white sticker. Um, and I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue. And then on the white one, I'm just gonna use this black and white Buffalo check ribbon, which I believe was from Dollar Tree. I don't think it was a Christmas item though. And I'm not even gonna glue this one. I'm just going to tie it around the top, gonna tie it in a knot, and then add a little bit of a bow and trim the edges. And I didn't hot glue or anything, and it stayed just fine. But you could certainly hot glue it if you wanted. But these were really cute and simple to do, and I'm gonna have um, them at the end of the video. I'll show you how everything came out. This is my other two ideas that I had, or other two things we made, the little snow scene, and then my houses, they're just displayed at a shelving unit I have. Still have a lot of my other stuff out still, but love how they came out. For this first one, I've got this round wood hanging piece from Dollar Tree, and those little wood beads are actually from a wooden brain teaser game from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Um, and you just cut it apart and you get a bunch of beads. And I'm gonna start by filling in the hole on our wood round real quick. And we're gonna be making, I'm combining, for my Try It Tuesday, I'm combining inspiration from two different YouTubers, um, two different ideas I'm kind of combining into one. So um, also you can see, I'm gonna start by painting these legs white and we're gonna paint the wood round um, black but I end up changing that in just a little bit. So now that everything is dry, we're going to glue on our little beads and I just put the holes facing like the inside so you couldn't see them. And then I just decided I didn't really like, this was like too purposeful black and white. So we're just gonna paint the legs black and make this whole piece black, yeah. So we're gonna do that. And then once that is all covered, we're gonna move on to our bottle brush trees. So I have lots of bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby and Walmart, Dollar General. I would imagine um, you might just have some in your stash. You could probably still pick some of these up um, at some of those locations as well. And I'm using the white ones, because I'm doing a black and white for my winter stuff, but I also included a couple of silver ones. And I'm just gonna create a little winter tree scene. And now I'm wanting to add on a little bit of Mod Podge and some of that faux snow from Dollar Tree. And I started out by just kind of putting it along the bases of each tree and building upon it. Um, I'll show you in the end how it, it came out. I didn't end up showing it in frame, so I didn't left the rest of it out. But I just kept adding Mod Podge and adding faux snow, and I ended up deciding to do basically the whole thing. 
So for this next one, I'm using one of these chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree. It's like a little easel. I had previously painted it with, I think, antique wax. We're going to go over it with some white acrylic paint now. Um, it comes in a natural wood. You can do this again, any color that you want. So I got my frame all painted. I'm just kind of wiping the base down with like a damp paper towel and then drying it just because it had fingerprints all over it. And here are these white plastic snowflake ornaments from Dollar Tree. They came in a 10 pack, so I have quite a few on hand still. And I'm simply just gluing this to the center of this for just a cute little piece for like on a shelf or even a tiered tray. Both of these would be perfect little fillers or tiered tray accents. And then I have these Buffalo Check ribbon bows, they're bows, um, from Dollar Tree. They came in like a six pack, so I still have a couple of them on hand. And I just glued that to the corner. And this is how they both came out. I think they're really cute and pretty and go with my little black and white theme for winter. So I'm excited to use these. I picked up this pack of three items from the Target dollar spot. It was $3 and I thought it was a great find. They're cute in and of themselves, but I didn't need them for any patriotic decor. Plus they didn't match my colors. So I thought it'd be fun to use these for Christmas and that's what we're going to do. So for this little book stack, I'm just going to take off the twine, which it just untied really easily, which was great because then of course you can reuse it. Then we're going to give everything a good sanding. Now I do apologize a couple times the camera shakes. Um, I have a new tripod, which helps me get some nice overhead shots, but when I bump it or the table, obviously the camera shakes, so I'm still getting used to it. So once I sanded that down, we're going to go ahead and paint this in white. Now I decided to paint the whole thing in white. Obviously you can do any shades or not shades, any colors or whatever that you want. Um, but I am doing this for my tear tray for Christmas that I think is a theme I'm going to go with. So that's why I'm choosing what I'm choosing. It didn't take a lot of coats. Um, covering the stars took a couple of coats and that little uh, navy strip took a little bit more, but we just gave it a couple coats until I had the coverage that I wanted. I just used some really cheap acrylic paint from, I always want to say Cracker, Cracker Barrel, but it's Apple Barrel, which is a plaid product. Just wanted to put that out there. Now I've got these red stickers. I have these from the Dollar Tree. They are not my most favorite stickers, but they do work. And um, they're the colors that I needed. Now I've noticed that some of the stickers, uh, letters, are not all of the same size. Like the A's seem a bit shorter, but that's okay. We're going to be going for kind of a whimsical themed tear tray. I've kind of been wanting to do that theme in my kitchen for Christmas. And so to, this year I'm going to make it happen. But you can use your Cricut, you can use stencils, you can use whatever you want for this. Um, so I'm okay with it being not super perfect, although I did try to, you know, line them up. And I just put on Candy Kaleen and I took this red and white twine. This is from the Dollar Tree. This was in a three pack for, with other colors from the Dollar Tree. So I don't believe that was an actual Christmas item. And we're just going to wrap that around a couple times and tie a little bow on the top. You could add on some other embellishments, but my tear trays, you know, they end up being kind of busy. So I thought it was nice to have something that was cute and whimsical, but wasn't overly busy. And I love how it came out. Now we're going to use this little sign. And I had this paper in my stash from, the, from Hobby Lobby. You can find all of the different seasonal stuff like that in the paper and stickers all year round at Hobby Lobby. I happen to already have this one in my stash, but you can certainly go out and find that stuff right now. And I'm just gonna cut it down to size. I was cutting it down to fit the inside, so I couldn't really trace it from the outside, if that makes sense. And got that cut down, and we're just gonna use some Mod Podge, and I'm gonna put a thin layer here on the inside and just coat all of it. Make sure you get into the corners so that the paper doesn't come back up. And Get a nice good coating and put the paper down and then you want to smooth it out. I have this great little Mod Podge scraper tool which is from um, Plaid which is the creator. Plaid is the company that owns um, or that creates or makes Mod Podge and so I use that to smooth it out but you could use like an old credit card or gift card and then I did go in my Christmas stash and I did have some of these wood snowflake cutouts. These are from the Dollar Tree. They have them every year in different forms and I found one that would fit in the sign. So I am just taking some filler and filling in that hole and letting that dry. And then I have a wooden cube from the Dollar Tree. And we are going to, I'm using a Gorilla Wood glue stick, but you could use whatever adhesive you want to. And I'm just going to glue that to the back. 
once the wood glue is dry or the glue whatever you use is dry and the filler is dry you're going to sand that off and then we're going to paint this. I am painting the edges of the wood block with some white paint just in case you can see it. You shouldn't be able to but I just wanted to make sure it was painted in case you could and then we're going to paint the snowflake. Once again I'm just using the apple barrel white paint. It's a very inexpensive paint. You can find it anywhere. You can find it at Walmart, craft stores. You can find it online and we're just going to give it one coat these little wood pieces don't take much paint to get good coverage and we're just gonna yeah paint the whole thing so i have this little wood piece set from the dollar tree from last year that i never got around to using it and inside was this little candy cane piece which was perfect because i was going to try to figure out how to make some candy canes but this was even better you can also find little embellishment pieces at hobby lobby and different cutouts at dollar tree every year so lots of little options. You could use mini ornaments, but this is what I had, so this is what I'm going with. And I'm just going to paint this. I'm just going to paint red and white like candy canes. I'm going to paint the bow red, and I'm just using some, once again, that apple barrel paint and some little tiny paintbrushes from Plaid. And if you use small paintbrushes, you really don't have to have, like, I mean, you have to have somewhat of a steady hand, but you don't have to have a crazy steady hand to do this. Just use a small paintbrush. And I do apologize. My head keeps peeking in on these shots. <laughs> so once everything was dry, I'm going to use that Gorilla Wood Glue stick again to attach this. Once again, use whatever you want. You could just use some hot glue if you want. And we're going to attach this snowflake down, and then we're going to take some more glue and attach the candy canes on top of the snowflake. And I decided to put it a little bit off center, um, but do it however you want. And I thought this was a cute little sign, and it's going to look really cute on my tiered tray. All right, and now for this last one, I have this sign from the Dollar Tree. This is in their summer stuff. And I pulled out my hairdryer to heat up the glue to pull the sun off. And then I realized I thought I could just do it, just push on it slowly. I didn't need to heat it up at all. It's just attached with some glue and those little wood pegs. So I was able to pull one of the pegs off and then the other one, I just ended up kind of, like the wood kept breaking off. So I just trimmed it off as much as I could um, so whether you're able to get the pegs out or not, you can still make this happen. And I'm going to use some more of that filler and fill in that little hole on the top and then let that dry. Um, I think it takes like 20 or 30 minutes to dry or you can wipe it with a damp paper towel. I usually just let it fully dry. And then we're going to sand it down. I'm going to sand off whatever's left of that wood stub as well and then just sanding down the whole thing. And it didn't really... I got a little frustrated because you could still see these words through because I'm, I'm painting here with red as you can see and I don't understand because it didn't seem like it was um what do I want to say like carved out so there was indentations but you could still see the words were coming through so I sanded it down painted it again and I don't know it just I don't know how many coats of paint it would have taken to not be able to see that through <laughs> So sometimes your DIYs are just a little bit of trial and error, and mine usually are. And if you like that kind of thing, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider push pushing that red subscribe button and turning on your notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos. I try to keep it simple and also real and share with you kind of the struggle sometimes. And I was going to originally re leave the edges just their natural color, and then I remembered what the top looked like, and so I was like, yeah, i got to paint it. So I'm going in with some black just for some contrast, but you're going to see, I, we're going to go in a couple different directions here. So the front piece, I was realizing it was just not getting the coverage that I wanted over the words that were written there. So I'm going to use my hair dryer. You can use a heat gun and I'm going to scrape off the sticker from the back, scrape off the glue, and I'm going to sand it, heat it, scrape it until I have it all cleaned up. It wasn't hard to do at all, um, but I just wanted to get all of that stickiness because we're not going to paint the back. So then I totally forgot what I was planning to do and I started painting this black and I didn't mean to paint it black but then I was like well I guess I'll just finish that up and then I went in with some red paint once it was dry <laughs> and because I had the black it took a couple of coats of red. So uh, it would take less if you use chalk paint but I wanted to use my acrylic paint today. So I went over this, I think maybe three coats, just letting it dry in between. And we were going with red on this side. 
And um, yeah, you'll see what we end up doing with the other side. Because then I was like, I don't actually want to do a one-sided sign. I want to do a two-sided sign. So I figured out a way to make the other side work, even though the writing was having a hard time like peeking through the paint. We're going to stick with the red side for now. I have these white stickers. They are from Hobby Lobby. But first I wanted to draw a line kind of to separate what would be like two blocks stacked on top of each other. And I just used my ruler and a white metallic marker pen thing from Dollar Tree, which honestly, I'm not a huge fan of. And you're going to see my hair, my head pops in, and it causes it to become unfocused. But you're going to use whatever stickers you've got. I love finding letter stickers on clearance from Do or from Hobby Lobby. You can get nicer stickers than at the Dollar Tree, although I do use Dollar Tree stickers sometimes. Um, anyways, I'm using what I have on hand. Then I also have these foam glitter stickers from Dollar Tree in my stash, and so I just put a few of those around, and we've got a little hot cocoa sign, which would be cute, on my chair tray. So now we're going to go do the same thing on the other side that I ended up painting black. Now you could, on certain angles, you could still see the writing through it. So you could just do some scrap paper, but I didn't have any scrap paper that I really liked for what I was going for. So I just decided that it wasn't really that noticeable. And with everything going on on my tear tray, you wouldn't be able to notice. So on the other side, I just did Hello Winter. We're going to um, put some Mod Podge over top to help keep the stickers down. And I kind of forgot. So I went over just the snowflake stickers when I did the red side. And then I did not like the little white marker line. I just felt like it, I don't know, it was too faint. So I'm just taking some white yarn and I'm going to wrap it around and tie it in a bow. I only wrapped it around twice the first time because I wanted to do the same thing on the flip side. And in order to be able to just tie a bow, I knew I'd just be able to wrap it around again. So I hope that makes sense. You can use ribbon. You can use twine. You can do whatever makes your little heart happy. And this way I thought I could... Either your tear tray could be seen from both sides, and mine cannot, but I can flip it around when I take my Christmas stuff down and still use this on my tear tray for winter. So I thought that was kind of a win-win. And that is going to do it for today's video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. For this first DIY, I'm using this ceramic pumpkin stack. It is from the Dollar Tree. Um, I have already had it in my stash, but I believe they have it. Well, I know they have it again this year because I... I personally have seen it, uh, maybe not in all the stores. And the top you can see is kind of broken. I think I bought it like that, but it's okay because I wanted to use it for Christmas. So we're going to give this a coat of um, Waverly in the color, uh, Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, which I probably could have skipped this step. You'll see in just a second. Um, but I did want to say if you found one of these and it wasn't broken on top, I think if you had, um, I don't know the name of it, but the proper sander or grinder that could work on um, ceramic, you could take the top stem off. And actually, I wish I had done that because mine, even though it was broken, still stuck up a little bit. But we're going to make it work just fine. Um, also, you could also just make a pumpkin stack with pumpkins that you purchase. They don't have to be ceramic. Um, but I just found this already done, so I'm using it. So after I painted it, I was like, oh yeah, the words on here and the little like vine, vines, I guess, on it um, are engraved. And so you could still see them. So I'm just taking some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and we're going to fill it in, let it dry. And then I'm just sanding off the extra chunks. This is a textured piece anyway, so it doesn't have to be smooth. And we're going to actually add some more texture. But this is going to fill in those words. So to do it again, I would just do this from the beginning before putting a coat of paint. It's really not necessary to paint it first. I just wasn't thinking. We're going to wipe it off clean. And then I'm going to just take a container with a little bit of baking soda and some of my plaster paint. I do also put in a little bit of water um, because my paint is really, really thick. Sometimes it happens at the end. Um, so not a lot because I don't want to dissolve the baking soda or anything. Um, and then we're just going to put a nice thick coat across the whole thing. And it just kind of keeps a textured look, and I liked it. So that's what I did. You could also do white um, or any color, obviously, but I went with the plaster. It's close to white, but it's just a little bit softer, and I just felt like doing that. So we're going to give this a good coat on the whole thing and then let that fully dry. I went into my stash to figure out what I was going to do to make a hat for our snowman. And I have these stickers. They are from the Dollar Tree from Summertime. Um, this one I'd already painted, but we're going to use that one. I'm just going to peel the little like um, sticky stick dot 
I don't know what it's called, pop dot on the back off. And then uh, I took a wood piece from the Dollar Tree as well. Those come in a pack. And I'm going to use some hot glue and some wood glue and attach these. And then we're going to paint this black. Uh, black. Now, you could use anything you found in your stash. I literally just went through all of my crafting stuff and kind of looked until I found things. You could also cut the base out of like a piece of cardboard or anything else. Um, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I just was using what I had and I just gave it one good coat in the color ink. If you're new here, I like to share budget-friendly, easy DIYs using a lot of Dollar Tree items, but also just in general budget-friendly. So if you are into that kind of thing, please consider subscribing by hitting the red bell or the red button and then turn on your notification bell, which is right next to it. And that'll make sure that you'll be notified when I post future videos. All right, so once that is dry, I'm kind of going a little bit all over the place because I was working on projects at once. So I already had out my Mod Podge and this faux snow. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but while it was out, I decided to add just a tiny bit of that to the brim of my snowman's hat. So here it is all finished. You can't see the writing at all. And we're going to put our snowman together. I did want to add a little bit of embellishment onto my snowman's hat. So I just grabbed these little tiny red glitter ball beads type things, or I guess they're foam. Um, they're from the Dollar Tree. They were just in my stash, but you could use some little red berries. Um, you could add a little bit of greenery, but I just hot glued very carefully because they're small and you don't want to burn your finger while doing this. You could use another type of glue, I suppose, and just put a little stack of three of them on there. So I'm going to hot glue this to the top, just putting hot glue on the parts. Mine is not like flat on the top, so just the parts where the hat and the top meet. And I did later realize that from this angle, you could really see a huge gap there and it didn't look great, but we're gonna fix that in a minute. I have these black buttons from the Dollar Tree, um, or you could use something from your stash. You could draw them on with a marker, but I found two little ones in there and glued them on. And then I, this is a fuzzy sock um, that I had used. I think I'd used part of it for um, a snowman's hat in something else in the previous year. Um, but I'm just cutting a strip of that and we're going to tie it on for the scarf. And I'm just tying it in a knot and then I'm going to hot glue the end pieces down just so that they're not, you know, flying up. I'm not adding a face to this snowman. I'm just kind of going for a simpler, I don't know, in my mind it was like more old timey, antique I don't know. Sometimes they did faceless stuff, didn't they? I don't know. This is the look I'm going for, but feel free to add on a face if you want. And I'm just taking little bits of that sock. You can't really see it because my arm's in the way, but I'll show you how it looks finished. And I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue underneath the brim of the hat, and I'm filling in that gap. Um, I just wanted it to kind of look like the hat went down further. So there you can see it. I love how this piece came out. And this is great not just for Christmas, but for the entire winter season. For our final DIY, I have this triangle sign from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use my hair dryer, or you can use a heat gun, or a wet paper towel, whatever you want, to get the sticker off the back. Now, this idea I have seen from many people, but um, I have a notebook that I write down ideas from when I get ideas, and when I wrote it down, I had seen this idea from Favi at Arrows DIY, and I'll link her video because she did a better job at it than me but I had fun with this for my first go at it. So I gave a nice coat of plaster and then I'm taking a candle and we're rubbing the wax on it. And this is gonna help us get a nice chippy look to our, what we're gonna make is a tree. So you can use any tree shaped or triangle shaped sign. And um, then we're gonna go in with some chalk paint in the color celery. You can do obviously any colors, just make sure everything is fully dry in between the different coats and you're going to go in with different colors and so we're going to let that dry then we're going to go in with more wax <laughs> oh, i'm sorry no you're not you're going to let that dry and then you're going to scrape and where the wax is or where you place the wax is where the paint should scrape off and i apologize this clip is blurry and i'm not really sure why i'm not sure what happened maybe there was just a smudge on my camera i don't know i do look forward to doing this again in the future because I feel like I will have a better feel for it now and we'll get, do better. But, um, you know, you gotta start somewhere. So don't be afraid to just give it a try. And so then we're gonna ab add more wax in some different spots and then we're gonna go in with another color. And I'm gonna use Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Fern. And with this paint, I'm gonna also paint the sides and the back of my sign. I did do two coats on the back of my sign 
oh my word, what is the noise is happening outside today? This paint, I realized I hadn't, you can see it's streaking. I apparently hadn't shaken it up enough, so I'm going to shake it up. But we're going to paint all of the edges, and I do two coats on the back. I don't think I show you all of that, um, just because I wanted it to look finished. But I didn't think that using what originally was the front of the sign would work very well for the scraping. So that's why I did what I did. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, that really helps me out. Say hello in the comments. Let me know what your favorite DIY is. Are you excited to do Christmas DIYs? Are you saving these for later because you're not ready to get started on them? Let me know. So once that last coat of paint dried, I just went and did some more scraping. So this is just supposed to be kind of like a rustic-y, chippy look, but um, there's lots of people who do it better than me, but that's okay. You gotta practice and learn. So I do recommend um, sealing this with some Mod Podge um, if you want. I guess you don't have to. So I was deciding what I wanted to do for a stem, so I pulled out one of those little wood pieces, and it looks cute, but I kind of wanted something bigger. So I pulled out three Jenga blocks, or the Tumbling Tower blocks. Rather, Jenga blocks are much larger. These are the Tumbling Tower game from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use some hot glue to stack them together. could also use some wood glue. One thing with the hot glue, sometimes it creates a little bit of a gap, but... This was rustic-y anyway, so I wasn't super worried about it, and I decided to do three of them all together. I did have to sand the bottom of these blocks because it wasn't totally smooth, and so the tree would have been rocking back and forth. So just keep that in mind. They're not, like, all perfect. Um, so just make sure that on one side, like the front, that they're all lined up and that you have a flat bottom. And then we're just using a little bit of hot glue to attach that trunk to the base of our tree. And then I'm just gonna go in with some antique wax. You could just use some brown paint, whatever you wanna do, and brush that on and then wipe it off. You don't have to wipe it off, that just kind of mutes it down a little bit, but you can also just leave it as is and let it dry. You can also use the natural color, that would be pretty as well. And that is it for this one. I am excited to try this uh, wax technique again, but I do think it came out pretty good. For this first DIY, I have this birdhouse from the Dollar Tree. I picked it up. They might still have them now, but it was definitely like in the summertime. Um, and I'm just going to pull off these little wooden pegs. I'm not really cutting them off. I just gripped them. And as you can see, rocking them back and forth. Don't worry about the holes. There's already gigantic holes. We're going to take care of that later. Um, but it wasn't super hard to get those off. I did give it a little sanding to smooth that out. And the roof had a rough patch, so I uh, smoothed it out. And then I had this territorial beige color in my stash, and I thought it was perfect for gingerbread, but you can use whatever you want. You can also, you know, mix paints. If you have a darker brown, um, mix that with some cream maybe and lighten it up. But we're just going to give this whole thing. I did it one main coat, and then I did a couple spots that I touched up again, but this wood is super absorbent and it just sucks up the paint and it will dry really quick so you can by the time I was finished I was able to go back around and um and do the second coat wherever it was needed and I'm just making sure I get every bit of this covered now I don't remember if I saw this idea from somebody before I came up with it I don't know I know I've seen lots of people do mini gingerbread houses and I don't remember if I got the idea to use the birdhouse from somebody or if I just thought of it when I saw that in the store but whatever. I try to give credit if I got the idea from somebody, but sometimes we all get the same ideas at the same time. <laughs> um, okay, so once that is all done and nice and dry, we're going to go in with this fabric paint. It's like a puffy paint. It's specifically fabric paint, but it reminds me of just puffy paint from when I was a kid. Maybe all puffy paint was fabric, fabric paint. I don't know, but this is from the Dollar Tree. They have it in different colors. I picked it up in white, and I think I have it in red and green, but I'm only using the white in this video because I just wanted to go for a little bit simpler stuff. Where I plan on using these DIYs, there'll be lots of stuff with color as well. So I just wanted to switch it out. I'm not totally thrilled with the pattern I did on the roof, but it's okay. I also reminded myself that it doesn't have to be perfect because if you ice a gingerbread house on your own, um, it's not perfect. So I just went around and decorated I did some windows with some shutters. I decorated the roof. I put a door and some windows in the front, and then I did a little tree here as well. And then once that was all dry, I pulled this paper out from my stash. It is from Hobby Lobby, and we're just going to put that over the back side. Um, chances are people won't see it anyway because of how my tear tray is used, but um, 
I wanted it to be, you know, to look better. And I just um, creased the paper, cut it out, and I did it at an angle so that the stripes were going to be slanted more like a candy cane instead of straight across or straight up and down. And then I initially used hot glue because I had it out and it was a horrible idea. The glue pretty much dried and didn't stick to the paper. So I mod podged over it. I tried to scrape some of the hot glue off, um, but it's very bumpy, but it doesn't matter. It, it still worked. So I just mod podged that on to the back of the house. And then I wanted to go in and add a little bit of snow. So I'm using this faux snow. You can get it from the Dollar Tree or if you have a Hobby Lobby, it's actually a little bit better deal at Hobby Lobby um, because their stuff is 50% off. So it'll only be a dollar. And I'm just putting it wherever I thought it should be. So I started off at the top of the roof and then I did the perimeter and then I went back and did like the edges of the roof and I just applied a little bit of Mod Podge, sprinkled the snow on and I did press it in a little bit um, so that it would hopefully stick better. When it was all done and dry, I do give another thick coat of Mod Podge, but I do not share that with you. Um, you just have to be careful. You kind of have to do a heavy coat on top of the snow because if you do a light coat, you'll just pull it back off takes a little while to dry, but to me, it's totally worth it to minimize the mess later. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so very much. And say hello in the comments. Let me know what your favorite DIY is, or do you like to decorate with any gingerbread candy theme at all in your house? Um, I'd love to hear from you. So for our last DIY, I have this pone tree. This came in a, maybe like a six pack from Hobby Lobby. I picked it up last year so I didn't still have the packaging but I'm sure they have them again this year and I'm going to once again give a coat of the Territorial Beige. Apple Barrel paint is very inexpensive. I did get a lot of it sent to me from Plaid um, because I am a Plaid ambassador but it's easy to find online, it's easy to find in Walmart or other craft stores and it is not very expensive and it comes in a wide range of colors. So we're going to go in once again this Fabric paint is perfect for the look of icing. And I just hid some at the top, and then I'm just going to do kind of some swirls. I ended up not doing them super, super even at the bottom, so I went back in and just kind of added some pieces. Again, it does not need to be perfect, but I just wanted to give some little gingerbread trees. Well, I just did one this go around, but I thought this would be really cute on my tear tray. Like I say, said, I'm planning on doing some gingerbread candy. I don't know, whimsical type stuff in my kitchen this year. So I'm excited to do that. I only used one bottle of this fabric paint for all of these DIYs and it was not completely empty. I will say just to make sure that you shake it down so that it's um, down at the tip when you're using it. Otherwise you might get some puffs of air which, you know, make it a little bit harder, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Once it's dry, I wanted to add some snow onto the top of this tree. But then I decided that I wanted to kind of do it all over. <laughs> so I just put some Mod Podge, sprinkled on some more of that faux snow, and then I let it dry and put another coat on top to seal it all in, which I don't show with you, but I've already explained it. <laughs> and this is how they all came out. I think they're super cute. I was very excited with how these came out. I am hoping to do some more of this theme in future videos, maybe do some of them with some color on it. We shall see, but that is it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. For our next DIY, I have this styrofoam cone from the Dollar Tree and a container with some baking soda, and then I'm gonna mix in some of this fern colored paint from Waverly. And I wanted to use a textured paint here because I didn't want it to look like styrofoam. So we're gonna paint this and just do a nice thick coat of this. I mixed up too much paint. Um, I always do that. Um, I, I found another project to use it for that's not in this video, but I was like, I'm not wasting this paint. So I have this ribbon spool that is empty. This is just one from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use a burnt umber. That's a little blurry, but that's the color. Burnt umber from Apple Barrel, and I'm going to paint this with that. And it does take two coats. Um, at first it looks like, wow, this is really streaky. Is it gonna like look okay? But it looked great. And I'm gonna do all of it, including the top and the bottom, and just kind of trying to make it look like an old fashioned like wooden spool is what I was going for based on the inspiration pictures that I just came across on Dollar or on Dollar Tree <laughs> on Pinterest. So I'm just showing you because 
I went in with another coat of this paint and I did not film it because it was just late at night and I just, I don't know, did it. And I went in and just pounced my brush on in different angles so that it was a thicker like textured look. So hopefully that makes sense. And then I just painted a little bit of the bottom because I didn't want any white to be seen from the bit that was gonna be hanging over the end. And we're just going to hot glue that to our base. And I do give this a good coat of Mod Podge, especially on the spool because the bottom of it is like a plasticky finish and it was gonna, it like was scraping off pretty easily. So just cover with Mod Podge. And then I have this little pine cone. I just poked a tiny little hole at the top of the tree for the little tiny stem on the bottom of the pine cone and pushed that down and just held it until the hot glue settled. And I love how this one came out. I can't wait to show you that at the end. For our final DIY, this one was also inspired from Sammy, and I have this silver metal uh, star piece from Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. My brain was struggling for a moment there. And also this a decorative filler, which looks very Christmassy, but it is not a Christmas item. It's just there at different times. And then random bits and bobs, we'll call them, from my stash and we are going to go ahead and fill this star up. This star is also not part of their Christmas stuff. It's just in their crafters square area. I love the idea of just filling it up with like Christmas fun. And this is going to just be a like a shelf sitter for me, but you could also have left the string on it and use it as an ornament. And I'm just using pine cones. I started out with the corners and we're just going to hot glue. It will hold pretty good, even though it's on the metal. Um, once it's all crammed in there, it's gonna be just fine, at least it is so far for me. I'm cutting off little pieces of the garland and just kind of shoving those in the corner, filling in the gaps and just kind of continuing on with it um, until I have just the desired look. There's really no wrong way to do this. You could do it all with pine cones. I think, I think Sammy just used pine cones and some type of greenery, if I remember correctly but um, you can do it any way you want. If you like this video, if you like budget-friendly, easy DIYs, then I would love it if you would consider subscribing. I think I already said that. I did already say that, but I'll just say it again because I'd love it if you would subscribe. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments on these DIYs. So as you can see, I was using some of that um, silver filler as well. And I did trim it a little bit because, again, those garland ties are a little bit hairy, a little bit fuzzy, so you can see I have quite a mess. I'm going to use these little silver beads, I guess. They were in that as well, and I just kind of um, folded up the stem to give me something to put some hot glue on. Just kind of gave like a thicker spot for the hot glue to attach itself to, and poked those in in various places as well. I have this little tiny uh, glittery pick. I think this might be from the Dollar Tree, but I'm not actually sure what it came from. What I did was I went up um, and got out my box of Christmas picks and I just kind of pulled out all of the little pieces <laughs> that were at the bottom of the bin and was like, I can use these. So I just wanted to add some, like different textures and dimensions. These ones like stick up a little bit further. And then I also wanted to add in some pops of red just because I thought that was pretty so I am just pulling apart various pieces of this red berry um, and just hot gluing them. Be careful with hot glue on these little tiny pieces. Um, I don't. I have a low temp hot glue gun, so I don't usually burn myself bad. <laughs> but be very careful. Um, you could also use some little tools. This is very sped up because this did take a little bit of time, but it wasn't like it was hard. It was enjoyable, and I just kind of watched a movie while while I did it. So. I sped it up and, you know, didn't put in all of the footage for you because that would have been a bit much. And that is it for these DIYs. If you love them, let me know what you think down in the description or no, nope, down in the comment section. This first DIY, I've got this picture frame from the Dollar Tree, this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I love this little pack. It's the smaller paper, um, but I got it when it was half off. And then I have these nativity ornaments from Hobby Lobby as well. There's three of them in there, I think. And I got that when it was half off as well, so it was only $1.50. So really affordable here. We're gonna just get our picture frame open up. I really like the finish on this frame, so I'm not gonna do anything to it. We're just gonna keep this very simple. I'm just going to pick out which piece of scrap paper I wanna use. I wanted something 
Um, I was kind of going for like a more rustic muted tone in this DIY, so I'm going to pick out this plaid paper. We're just going to cut it down to size, and I was able to just kind of use this piece that I'm cutting off and line it up and fill in, you know, finish out the piece I needed. I was able to make it fit there. And you really cannot tell um, the pattern lined up really well. So we're just going to put our paper back in. I do put the glass behind the paper. That way it gives it something um, like firm and hard, but I also didn't want, um, I didn't want to put it over it because I didn't want it glossy finish. So I just put the glass behind the paper. Then I can always use it again in the future for something else. So with our nativity ornament, we are just going to fill in the hole with hot glue. I kind of wish I had done spackling because um, the antique wax did not go over the like any little remnants from where I wiped off the glue. Um, so you'll see how I end up fixing that. But I'm just using a baby wipe and staining this with some antique wax, just wiping on and wiping off. I'm trying to go gently with this because this does have a lot of little grooves in it and I didn't want any of the stain to just like clump up in, um, in any of those cutouts. And you can see here it was like just not staying where the like little bit of hot glue had been. So I decided to just go in with this metallic gold paint and it's not like super crazy shiny. Um, and I just went in with a small paintbrush and painted the star on top of the nativity and it covered fine there. So the, um, the paint covers fine over that, just not the wax. And then I'm just using some hot glue. I wish I had a detail gun um, for this, but we're just gonna hot glue that on. And I actually didn't get it totally centered and I was a little bit bummed. I may go in and cut out some more paper because I couldn't I couldn't change it. I'll show you it at the end. Um, at the end, I'll show you all the finished DIYs. So for this next DIY, I've got this ornament that is from Walmart. I picked it up last year. This sign from Dollar Tree and uh, the ribbon was, I believe was also from Dollar Tree. So we're just going to open up this frame. I, once again, I like the frame color, so I'm not gonna paint that at all. And I'm just going to, I was trying to really carefully take this off so I didn't tear the paper. But then you see here, like the ornament that I was using, the way I was gonna do this was not going to cover up the picture in the center. So I ended up just painting the whole thing black. Um, I would have just, I was going to try to just use a black and white buffalo check pattern, but um, what was underneath was the same as the piece I took off. So I think you know what I'm saying. So I'm just going in with some um, ink paint, or paint in the color ink, and we're going to cut our ribbon um, into strips. We're just going to make it kind of look like a present. It is a wired ribbon, so I probably didn't have to glue it, but I decided to glue it anyway. Um, and I'm just going to make sure everything is centered. Put down a little bit in the center because we're going to be gluing the ornament in the front and I didn't want it to pull the ribbon away from it. If, it, if the, the ribbon was not glued in the middle, I felt like it wouldn't hold as good. So I did put glue in the center there. And this is another really super quick and easy one. Um, I wanted to, I was hoping I could just like bend off this little hanger because it's so like I heated it up with my um, hair dryer, hoping I could just like pull the glue off or melt, soften the glue so I could pull it off. Uh, that didn't work, so I just used these uh, wire cutters and just cut off the top of the little hanger. So it wasn't super hard, it just didn't go the way I thought it would. And then hot glue is difficult on metal, so I'm just using my super glue gel and putting a good amount of it on. And then I think I do go in with a little bit of hot glue as well, um, but I just feel like hot glue doesn't, you know. It cools so quickly on the metal. And when they're just gonna press that down, make sure it's on there really good. I put a few paint bottles on top just to help it press down while it was drying. And then I just popped it back in and I love how this one came out. If you are new to my channel, hi and welcome. My name is Leanne. I enjoy sharing budget-friendly DIYs with you here on this channel. And I hope that you consider subscribing before you leave and make sure your notification bell is turned on. For our next one, we're gonna use another ornament from Walmart for 98 cents. I picked this up last year, and we're not gonna do a whole lot here. I'm filling in the hole, but then actually I'm just kind of putting glue along the whole roof line. And we're gonna use this faux snow. You can pick it up at Dollar Tree. If you have a Hobby Lobby nearby, it's actually cheaper there now that it's on sale. And I think it's a slightly bigger bag, but um, either way, Dollar Tree is still a good deal if that's all you've got access to. Probably Walmart has it too at other craft stores. 
and I'm just going to, we're just going to bring the snow to life here. You can also do this with Mod Podge, but um, I decided to go for hot glue and I just put along the top of the roof, along the top of the chimney, where basically wherever the snow already was, and we're going to put it along the bottom as well. I just thought this was really cute and I'm hoping to do some like gingerbread, um, whimsical food type theme in my kitchen this year. I've been wanting to do that for a while. So that's kind of where my head's at for these. And then I'm just going to take some of those tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and hot glue them on the back so that this will stand up. Probably will use this on my tiered tray. Not totally positive, but um, yeah, I love how this one came out. Super easy. Just needed a little bit of embellishment. Now to keep the snow from falling off and being a complete mess at the end, I decided to go in with some Mod Podge. I do this often. I poured out the Mod Podge because I didn't want to put the little flakes back in my bottle. And I just go really, really thick. It takes a little while to dry, but if you try to go thin on it, you'll just end up pulling more of the snow off. For our next one, I have this little sign that it was already a makeover. I did it. Um, the sign is from Hobby Lobby. I like to buy signs there on clearance. And I had Mod Podge on this little window cling but um, for the fall and I just wanted to redo it. So even though I Mod Podged it, I was able to peel it off pretty um, easily. Not like so easily that it was gonna fall off, but easy to change. So we're going to just, um, I taped off the edges because I wanted to leave the edges of this black, but we're going to use some red crimson paint and paint over the buffalo check, but we're only gonna do one coat of it. And you can still see the buffalo check through it. It just looks like it's like a red buffalo check. I have these window clings that I pulled or that I got from the Dollar Tree and I found one that fit on here. I am cutting off the edges. I don't always do that because, but this one was like tinted like a teal green. It wasn't actually clear, but this is really annoying to do. So find window clings that have a clear edging or paint the background the same color. Um, and then I'm just going to go in with some Mod Podge once again and attach this on very, you know, easy thin layer of Mod Podge. Place it on, try to push out, make sure there's no like air bubbles, and then I just put a little bit of Mod Podge around the edges, and I think that is it for this one. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would love that because that helps me out so much, so I hope that you do that. And let me know in the comments down below which one of these is your favorite. Right now we're working on our last DIY for this video, and I have this little chalkboard sign from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to paint all of the wood like all of the wood pieces on both sides in this red crimson paint. I originally was going to do the inside edge. You saw me trying to do that just a second ago. And then I decided uh, not to because, yeah, I'm just going to end up doing that the other color, which I think is white. Yeah. So we're going to paint the base and the outside edge all with this crimson color. And I'm just using a small paintbrush. This is way sped up. I just took my time so that I didn't get it on the chalkboard because we're going to paint that as well and I didn't want it to be hard to cover up the red. So just using a small paintbrush helps a lot. And it only took one coat of paint. This wood took the paint um, very well, and so I only had to do one coat. Now the window clings we're gonna use on this one were in the same pack as from the last DIY, but they're like a 3D, and they have a stickiness on the back. So I've never used them on windows. I don't know how they would work because like typically window clings don't actually have like a sticky adhesive on it, but these puffy ones do so, but it says window clings on the packaging. Anyways, we're going to make this a double sided sign. So we're going to paint both sides with some white paint. I'm using white chalk paint from Waverly. I do a couple coats of the white and I'm just using a little angled brush and I'm getting the inside edge. You can kind of see of the wood there. Um, I'm just getting that with this paintbrush and this little angle brush worked really good. These were so sticky that I didn't even use hot glue or anything else. And I'm just gonna use this cute little gingerbread man on one side. My tier tray is not usually seen from all sides, but I decided to still make this a double-sided sign. And these are so cute. I, I, I'm really excited to do my kitchen this year. <laughs> and then I put this little gingerbread-like tree on the other side. This edging on it is just white, so I figured it kind of blended in well with the white background. And here is how all of my DIYs came out. My house is not decorated for Christmas yet. It will be soon. So I don't have a Christmas background here, um, but I just wanted to get good lighting so that hopefully you could see how all of these came out. 
I know there's a variety of styles in my DIYs, but I just kind of decorate with all things Christmas that I love. And then I typically try to group like things together. So I hope you enjoy these. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. All right, so for this first one, it's very quick. It's hardly even a DIY, but I have these ornaments from Hobby Lobby. They come in a six pack. You can see the price was $2.99. I think I picked them up when they were 50% off, so it was $1.50, and, but now their stuff is even 60% off, so a really good price for that. And then I have these window clings. These came in a two pack from Dollar Tree, and these ones, I don't really know how they work as window clings because they're actually sticky, like stickers, and they're puffy. Um, but either way, they're cute. And I'm just sticking some of these on either side. I'm gonna have a mini tree kind of in my kitchen area when I'm trying to do some like gingerbread themes. So I thought these were really, really cute. And like I said, super simple. I'll show you all of the finished DIYs at the end of the video. Moving on to our next one, I have this little sign from Fall Time, but they have them at different seasons. And then these three um, tree cutouts and some tumbling tower blocks. So I'm gonna start by attaching the tumbling tower blocks to our Christmas trees. We just need a wider surface at the bottom to attach these later on. And so I'm just using some hot glue. And as you can see, this doesn't actually cause them to stand up. They're still like top heavy and would fall forward, but um, that's okay. That's, we're not needing them to stand up um, freely. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. I love sharing budget-friendly DIYs here on this channel. I try to keep them easy and simple. And so yeah, I'd love it if you would stick around. We're gonna paint each of our trees a different color. I'm going to do one in um, white. I'm using all Waverly chalk paint, but you can use anything. But I'm gonna use white, crimson, and fern. And I'm just going to paint one coat, but I'm going to paint all the front the sides and the back, just because I want the back of this sign to look finished. And you could sand these down. These pieces are have pretty rough edges, but I'm not really worried about it because I kind of go for a little bit more of a rustic feel anyway. So um, yeah, that's just fine. And while I had my white paint out, I wanted to get going on the base. So I'm just taking this piece out here. This I did, did take two coats of the paint um, to cover it and make sure it is fully dry in between because it has kind of like a glossy um, coating on top and so if you don't make sure it's fully dry it will um, peel the paint back off as you do a second coat. So now that everything is dry I'm taking the white tree and I'm just using an Elmer's glue stick. Kristen K um, often does this when she instead of Mod Podge she uses the glue stick so I thought I would give it a try and it worked really well with the tissue paper. I'm using the snowman tissue paper that I've had on hand. I don't know where I got it from. Probably from Dollar Tree, but I'm not sure. And it was nice because I was actually able to peel it up and move it because um, I didn't like where I had it at first. I wanted to make sure that there was at least some complete snowmen that were going to be on the tree when it was all said and done. And then I'm just going to trim that down and let that um, fully dry. And then I wanted to give this technique a try where you use a lighter and it just kind of follows along the shape. Um, it worked out pretty good. I had never done it before. I'm not sure why, but it kind of discolored the edges. I don't know if I had to do with the glue I was using. So I did go around and touch up with some white paint, but I will definitely try that technique again. Um, you could also just use some sandpaper. Just make sure you use the sandpaper going in um, away from the paper so you don't lift up on it and make sure it's fully dry first. And then while I had my paintbrush out, I wanted to do some white um, kind of dry brushing along the edges on the red and green tree. I did the edges and then a little bit across the front of them as well. And now we're going to attach these to our base. I'm using some super glue gel along with some hot glue. The hot glue just kind of holds it in place immediately, but the super glue gel will help it hold more long term. And I just kind of figured out where I wanted to place these. So you can see the back of these is not necessarily intended to be seen, but I wanted it to have that finished look just in case it was seen. I didn't want to leave it bare on the back. I'm going to place the snowman tissue paper white <laughs> Christmas tree in the middle and I'm just going to have it overlapping a little bit in the front so I'm making sure to put a little bit of glue on those bottom um, tips of the tree so that it will attach to the red and green tree as well. It'll just give it some added security. 
And then I wanted to add a little extra detail. So I have these wooden snowflakes. I'll so show you the package in the next DIY so you can see where they came from. But I just pulled five of them out, used a baby wipe and some antique wax to stain them. And then I'm dry brushing a little bit of white paint that was left over on my paintbrush. And then I'm just gonna use some super glue gel very carefully, trying not to glue my hands, although I did a little bit. But I'm just gonna glue those across the bottom. And I thought that that added a nice little detail. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much. It lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my videos, which makes them more likely to share my videos with others. For our last DIY, I have this metal tree sign from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna give it a couple coats of this green paint. It is called Fern, and it is from Waverly Chalk Paint. And with painting metal, you really just need to make sure that it fully dries in between each coat because it will just peel back up off of the metal surface. There is a hole at the top of this tree, but we'll be covering that up so it's really not a big deal. But if you do yours a little differently, you might wanna fill that in first. And I'm using my hair dryer to dry it in between coats. Um, I just recommend using a cool setting because sometimes some paint can crack and I'm not really sure why it does sometimes and why it doesn't others. I don't know if it has to do with the paint I'm using or the surface it's painted on or maybe a combination, but I just used a cool setting and that worked great. So I painted both sides with two coats. And then I have this wood piece. This was from the Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. And I'm just going to paint the edges and the top with a Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And this wood it took the paint really well and I just had to do one coat. So that was a really quick process. So these are those snowflakes that I used in the last DIY. I picked them up at Hobby Lobby. Again, $3.99 was the original price, but you can get it 50 to 60% off depending on when you grab them, and there's a ton in there. So I will have these probably for a couple of years. And I'm just using this gold metallic paint, and I pulled out two of them because this sign, again, is gonna be one-sided, but I wanted it to look okay from both sides. So we're gonna paint both snowflakes with the gold paint, and then when I flip it over, the second side, we're going to put on some glitter while the paint is still wet. Um, you could also just put on some Mod Podge, but I thought this would be easy. And I just have this, it's kind of like a rose gold glitter. I didn't want to buy new glitter because I don't use glitter that often, but I have like two colors. So if I want to use glitter, that's <laughs> what I'm going to use. So I just added that while the paint was still wet, just on one side of them. And we'll come back to those in a second. I painted the edges of a Jingle Block and used some super glue gel and wood glue to attach that. You wanna use the super glue gel for sure because the metal, like hot glue, doesn't hold super great on metal. And I Mod Podge both sides of this as well because I didn't want the paint to scrape off of the metal tree. And you'll see a little bit of white here because it's not fully dry. Um, I'm just trying to keep moving along. Um, same thing with the, the snowflakes. I did put a little bit of uh, Mod Podge on them as well just so that the glitter wouldn't fall everywhere. And I'm just going to line them up and glue those on both sides, making sure that the hole on the tree is covered. And then we'll use some super glue gel and hot glue once again. It's a good combo. You could use other glues, whatever you know works well for you. But we're going to glue that to the center. And then I felt like it looked just a little bit bare. And so I just took these little bottle, bu bottle brush trees. These are from the Dollar Tree. They come in like maybe a six pack and they come in different colors. They have green and gold, white and silver, I think is what I've seen. And I'm just gonna glue a few of those on the front as well, just cause I felt like it needed something else. Here is how my DIYs came out. These are how the ornaments came out. I love them. I think they're so simple and cute and they're gonna be great with my gingerbread theme that I've got going on. And then this is the tree trio. And I think this will be a nice layering piece on my shelf. I might actually use it on the shelf where I'm showing it to you, but I don't have that decorated yet with anything else. And then this last one, I think this came out, again, kind of a nice um, layering piece and really could work for even in the winter because it's just kind of, you know, that just green pine tree feel. Hello friends, welcome back to another easy DIY video. We're gonna get straight to it. For this first one, I'm using this house that I think was originally from Hobby Lobby that I picked up on clearance and had previously painted it and used it in a DIY. And we're gonna repaint it. I'm just gonna paint it white, although the pink actually could have worked for this DIY. But um, anyways, you can also get some plain 
wood house pieces from Dollar Tree and I've seen them other, I'm sure you can get them other places as well or you could just cut a scrap piece of wood. This first DIY is gonna be super quick and easy. It's using some window clings. The second DIY is a little bit longer, a little bit more detailed, but easy and super, super cute. At least I thought so. So now we're gonna just take these window clings and I'm going to cut around the edge because it has a slightly tinted edge. And on one of my other DIYs, a subscriber told me, or a commenter, I guess I don't know for sure if they're subscribed, but suggested that I try cutting that off while it was still on the cardboard, like the thicker backing. And I thought that was a really good suggestion. So I did that and it was a lot easier. And we're just going to cut around the pieces that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use three of those window clings all together. They are from the Dollar Tree. I had mentioned in another video that I'm hoping to do some more like gingerbread themed stuff in my kitchen. So I've been working on getting some more DIYs done for that. So that's what this one is for. But you could of course use any window clean things that you wanted and we're just going to use some good old Mod Podge and Mod Podge them on the back. Once you put it on it's still a little bit movable um, which is nice and then I just put a little bit over the top. You can do more or less whatever you want to do and um, that is really kind of it for this DIY. I did add on this little bow on top just because I wanted I don't know, one more little detail. This is from a pack from Dollar Tree. They're red and green bows, glittery. And um, I bought them, I don't know, a couple of years ago. But there it is. I thought that's gonna be really cute for my little gingerbread themed area. All right, moving on to the next one. This is the last one for the video. It's a longer DIY, but don't worry. Don't be intimidated. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. I have this little house bank piece. You can see the little slit at the top. And this is from the Dollar Tree. I've had this for a while. We're gonna come back to the paper backing later. I've got the little razor blade from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to scrape off the wording here. This comes off pretty easily. It took a little bit of time. Obviously this is sped up a bit, but we're just going to clean that up and then just you know wipe it down to make sure we don't leave any little pink specks behind. Now I'm gonna go around the inside of this and give it a couple coats of white Waverly chalk paint. Just make sure that it's dry first before you put on a second uh, coating so that it doesn't pull back off because this is just like a cheap plastic. The outside is textured and that took the paint a little bit easier, but this does not have to be perfect. It's not going to be seen that well. This is just to make sure that it's, you know, it has a little bit of a brighter inside, but it does not need to be, um, it's, the details of it is not super important. And then we're going to paint the outside with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and this also took a couple of coats. If you're new here, my name is Leanne and I enjoy sharing budget-friendly, easy DIYs with you. I do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs, but oftentimes Hobby Lobby has just as good prices, if not better, um, sometimes with thrift store or upcycling stuff, so whatever I can find to do on a budget. On this part here, I am gonna do kind of the inner part that is near the plexiglass like this, or whatever that, plastic front is and I wanted I didn't want there to be any black and at first I was trying to be really hard to not get any paint on it and then I realized I can just go in with the razor blade which I did and clean it up so give that a couple coats until it's got the coverage that you want and then this paper I wanted to peel off probably wasn't super super important um, but I used my hair dryer to heat it up and I scraped it off using this little tool which is from the Dollar Tree I think it's supposed to be like a mimic of a Cricut tool. I don't know. I don't have a Cricut, but I grabbed a bunch of those tools from the Dollar Tree because they still come in handy. So we're going to just do our best. It's going to still have like some sticky residue, but it doesn't matter because we're going to cover it up. So you probably could have just covered it up to begin with. I don't know. I pulled out this scrapbook piece of paper. I pulled out one that I didn't think I was likely to use as much because I just wanted the back, uh, the white part of it. So we're just gonna trace it and cut it out, trim it down to fit inside. Um, it's not gonna go all the way to the edges because there's little clips there. And I ended up using the little checkered pattern as my guide to trim it down. I was like, oh, this will help me stay straight. And I have a Gorilla Glue Stick. I love this thing. I think I got it at like Marshall's or some, something random like that. Um, you could use a regular glue stick or any glue that you wanted. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out where to buy more of this Gorilla Glue Stick though because I love it. And we're just going to put this paper down and then set that to the side. We'll come back to that again at the end. 
I really hope you guys enjoy this. We're making kind of a little scene shadow box thing. Um, there's various signs um, at Dollar Tree that you could do this with. It doesn't have to be a house shaped, um, but I've had this for a while and once I started pulling this all together, I was kind of excited. So I have this little wood, 3D wood kit from the Dollar Tree. I have a couple of them. This one has the trees and snowman and a couple other things, but we're just gonna use these two pieces. So I'm just using a cutting mat, a straight edge, and a razor blade to trim off the bottom because it was gonna be a little bit too tall. And then I'm going to paint the trees. This is what take a little bit of time, but it's not hard. It's very relaxing. <laughs> but I'm gonna paint the trees with fern, and we're gonna use Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel for the trunk. We're gonna paint the bottom where the snow would be in white. And we're just gonna paint all of these pieces and um, a lot of my DIYs are a little bit quicker than this, but like I said, this one is so easy. It's not um, complicated. And of course you could change this up to like using different items and to your style of preference. So now we're moving on to the snowman and I'm painting um, obviously the snowman white. At first I was trying to paint around the buttons, but you'll see, we, it, it's all right. You'll, you'll see how it comes out in the end. The little cardinal on the snowman's head in the crimson. This looks a little bit grainy to me, and I don't know why. And then we're gonna use that fern color again for the scarf. And then we'll paint the hat black. On and on it goes. If you are enjoying this video, if you like these DIYs, if you like budget-friendly, easy DIYs, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps me out so very much, and I would love to have you, um, yeah. Give the video a thumbs up, say hello in the comments. Then I'm going to use this little dotting tool to try to do the buttons, and I messed them up. Um, I'm going to use a smaller end to do the eyes on the snowman. That worked good. I'm going to paint over the buttons and redo them with this little fine tip sharpie. We're going to do the mouth. I also decided to outline the scarf and the mittens to kind of bring back in a little bit of the detail. Just make sure your paint's dry. I just kept using my hair dryer to paint or to try the paint. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing there, just kind of outlining everything. And then I'm going to do the buttons, and then I outline the carrot nose, although that kind of got covered up when I used the little dotting tool once again. This is from the Dollar Tree, or you could use the back of a, of a paintbrush or a tiny paintbrush as well. So I was showing you there, there's a little ridge inside the house, so I was cutting out a little notch in my snowman, so that would um, sit flush in there. And it actually came out perfect. It, it fit on there. It was very easy to do, and it fit, fit on there perfectly. So now we are going to start adding our snow. So it gets messy here. You can skip this part if you want. If you had a pretty, pretty sparkly or snowy background, you wouldn't have to do this. We're gonna add snow on all the things. I'm using Mod Podge and that faux snow from, you can get it at Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. It is actually a bit cheaper at Hobby Lobby as it's on sale, and I think a slightly bigger package, but either way or there's all different types of faux snow we're gonna we're gonna do all the things guys so we're gonna paint the um, bottom of the tree base with it too I just keep cleaning off the edge with my finger because I know I have to glue everything down and I don't want um, anything to get in the way of that so I'm putting a little bit of snow on the bottom little parts of the tree not the whole tree I just wanted it to kind of fall randomly sorry if I sound a little bit um, nasally I have had a silly little cold. Um, I'm finally feeling much better, but I was going through about a box of tissues or so a day. <laughs> and um, it wasn't anything really more than that, but it sure was kind of exhausting. Anyways, we're gonna also just do a tiny bit on the top and the brim of the snowman's hat. And we just wanted to add little bits of this all over the place. Then we wanna cover up the little hole in the top that was supposed to be the bank. So I'm just gonna take a big popsicle stick. I just broke it. Um, you could cut it. And I'm gonna hot glue that on the inside because we're going to put some snow on top of the roof and this will prevent the snow from falling through and it will help us cover up that opening. So I first use a bunch of hot glue there to just kind of fill it in more. And then we're gonna go in with Mod Podge and I did the roof, I did the front of the roof as well. And I just did it thicker in some places than others, um, just because I feel like that's kind of how snow sometimes 
looks, but you feel free to do this however you want. And I'm showing you these little bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree, but I only had one of the green ones and I really wanted to use a green tree. So I pulled some off of those truck ornaments. They're from Dollar Tree from a couple years ago. Um, I think Walmart's had them as well. So now we're going to assemble everything. I am put a solid amount of hot glue and we are going to, I just kind of put like a mound of it and then push the snowman down in it and then put it all around. And you just have to hold it until it dries. And then I did um, put a little more hot glue and I'm just sprinkling some snow in as we go. You gotta start obviously from the front to the back. So I'd already laid out where I wanted everything. Same thing with these little trees. They don't do not have a base. So I made, I'm pulling all of those hot glue strings. Those things drive me nuts. Um, I put a mound of hot glue. Then like I said, put the tree down in it. You, this was hard for me because I don't have a lot of patience <laughs> when it comes to my DIYs. Oddly enough, I have patience in like other areas, but um, I really just want my want to keep moving. Um, but you really do have to just hold everything in place until the hot glue starts to set. So um, it's worth it. This was the best way I could come up with. I guess super glue gel would have been a good option as well. But you probably maybe a combination of both would have been good. But anyways, now we're going to do a really thick line in the back. I'm just paying attention to where the back piece will go in because obviously I don't want to mess that up and we're gonna knock it over and then we're gonna put the trees down in that back line there and I am just continue to do this with all the pieces. Hot glue, putting it down in, holding it, put a little bit more glue in to reinforce it and then I throw some faux snow on top to kind of disguise the hot glue. And I just kind of shook it around and then shook out the extra. So here you go, I tried to give you a little bit of a better shot of what I was doing, but obviously you don't have to do it exactly this way, but the idea is to show you how what I'm doing. <laughs> so this is what I did. And then we're just going to pop the back in and um, the roof is a little bit still wet, which is why it, the Mod Podge looks like that. Um, but I love how this came out. I thought this was adorable. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and happy Thanksgiving guys. For this first DIY, I have this house that I picked up from Dollar General on clearance. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I'm sure it was a dollar or less. And you can pick similar things like this up at Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna pull off this rope. I might have to use my hair dryer to heat up the glue, but it doesn't look like it. It's just going to remove that. I think for now, I'm just gonna leave the front even though the paper is torn there. I think I'm just gonna leave the front, it's pretty. And I'm just gonna clean this off. All right, pretty easy. It's a little bit dinged up, it's not too bad. We're gonna give this a coat of paint, white paint just to freshen up the back. Um, you could do the other side too, but I'm just gonna leave that for now. I am gonna go ahead and paint the sides too, just cause there's some kind of dings. There's a couple little gouges, but I'm just gonna paint them white and you'll, they'll blend in. It's really not a big deal. It's part of what happens sometimes when you buy marked down pieces. But it makes for some really inexpensive DIYs. If you don't already do this, you should definitely check out like Dollar General, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, just different places um, and snatch up stuff when they have uh, clearances because you can always just paint stuff and change stuff. So it's a great, great way to find some um, budget-friendly things to make over. We're gonna use the flip side of this disc that was on here as well. So I'm just gonna give the back of this a nice coat of white paint just to, uh, just to yeah, even things out and all that. All right, so I'm gonna put a good layer of Mod Podge over this house. I am trying the method where you Mod Podge, Mod Podge first, let it dry, and then you do the tissue paper with some heat. So that's what we're giving a try. So now that my Mod Podge is nice and dry, I've got this tissue paper that I got from Dollar Tree. I thought it was really pretty. And I know you're supposed to do this with an iron, but I'm a rebel and I'm gonna try it with my hair dryer, which is what I use as my heat gun. And we're gonna see if it works. If not, I guess I'm going to get my, my iron. Okay, it's not working at all. 
Don't try this method. I'm gonna go get my iron. All right, so from what I understand, you just put some parchment paper down on top and then you iron with no steam. I think on like a medium heat. Let's find out. I trimmed down my tissue paper so I didn't have a bunch of excess. We're gonna give it a go. Seems to be working. This is pretty cool. Make sure you get the edges really good so that you can have a nice clean edge around the outside. Ooh, that's hot. All right, so that is my first time using that method and it worked really good. So I'm gonna use a little nail file to sand off the edges. You just wanna go away from the paper so you're not pulling back up on it. You can just use sandpaper, but I've seen a lot of people use a little nail file and I thought that's probably handy for these smaller projects. As you can see, this is coming off super easy. It does give a little bit of a rustic edge, but I like it like that. Look at how beautiful this paper is. Oh my goodness. For this, I'm just gonna use these pretty red shiny stickers that I picked up from Hobby Lobby a while ago on clearance. Um, but you could use rub-on transfers or Cricut or um, whatever. I was gonna use some gold rub-on transfers. Hey, my J broke. Um, from Dollar Tree, but I found these and I really wanted to use the red. Let's just see how it fits because these are fancy letters. I cut them all out and it looks like it's gonna fit, but it might be tight. Oh yeah, we got this, hopefully. I normally would start with the, the O to center it, but I really wanted to start from the outside because the J and the Y are so um, bulky that I wanted to be sure that they were gonna be in there. I think I'm gonna leave the dot off the J on the top. I feel like it still looks fine. I couldn't really use the jute twine that came on it again, just because of how I took it off. But I have this, and I have other stuff like that, but I have this berry garland from the Dollar Tree that I wanted to try to use in this pretty pearl color. So I'm gonna just actually cut off a couple of these and I'm gonna see if I can kind of thread it through the hole on the joy little tag and then wrap it around. If you're new here, I wanna thank you for stopping by my channel. I hope that you consider subscribing. Just hit that subscribe button down below and make sure your notification bell is turned on. I love sharing budget-friendly, easy DIYs here on this channel. And I'm gonna put just a dab underneath here to help secure that down. For this next DIY, I have this little gingerbread house. This is from the Dollar Tree, and we're just going to spruce it up a little bit. I'm gonna use some antique wax by Waverly and a baby wipe, and we're just gonna use that to um, stain this. You just don't wanna go too heavy. So, and I, this way, I'll kind of avoid getting like clumps in all of the little cutouts. This has a light in it. I didn't show you that yet, but, um, and so we just don't want to get any clumps there. We're going to do the front and the back, and I'm going to try to do the insides as well. You could also use like a paintbrush and then wipe it off with a baby wipe or a paper towel, but I like this because I have a lot of control. So I'm just using my finger. So I'm curious to know if you guys want to continue to see more Christmas DIYs or is it now getting too close to Christmas that you don't want to see anymore? You're kind of done with that stuff. I'm also um, yeah, curious, I guess, what you would want to see next. Just should we go into like some winter DIYs? Seems weird to like already be done with Christmas because Christmas isn't here yet, but I know decorating kind of goes on its own timetable. So let me know what you guys think. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with some fabric paint. I have these that I picked up at Dollar Tree, and then I have this one that I, I don't know, I've had forever. So my white one is getting low, so I'm gonna try to get what I can out of that. And we're just going to decorate. I'm not gonna go too crazy with this, but we're just gonna have fun with it. Could also use a little tiny paintbrush 
to me, this is one of those tasks that you like put a movie on for or something like that. It's kind of tedious, but it's not necessarily hard. Just enjoy it. This little thing does have a string on top that you could very easily cut it off. I think I'm gonna leave it on and see if I can put this on my little tree that I have like in my kitchen area. But you could easily just take the string off and use this on a tiered tray. Another thing that would be really probably easy for this would be some type of paint pen. Um, but I don't have any of those. I do actually have some coming. I have a company that reached out to me to try out some of their stuff and I was like, oh, I've never had like paint pens. I would love to try that. Um, but I feel like that would be very easy too if they have like a, a fine tip. I will say that this fabric paint does tend to take a while to dry. So just a heads up on that. I feel like I did pretty good. I butchered the wreath, but everything else is pretty good. For our next DIY, we're gonna use these bead wreaths from Hobby Lobby. They come in a three pack, and you could use this as an ornament. You could use this hanging on a small hook. You could use it um, leaning on a, like a tiered tray, all sorts of things you could do with it. These wreaths were $3.99, but of course get it when it's 50 or 60% off and not a bad price. I also have these red berry picks for my stash and these Merry Christmas signs from Dollar Tree. And then I have this lamb's ear. This was actually from Hobby Lobby on clearance. There were two pumpkins on it. One of them already fell off, but I did save it. I will be saving the other one too. But this was like a dollar on clearance. And I was like, I can pick that apart and use the greenery. So we're gonna use that. And maybe something else, we'll see. The first thing we're gonna do is stain our Merry Christmas sign. I say stain, but you know, with the antique wax, we're gonna do it with the baby wipe, just like we did the gingerbread house. This doesn't take long to dry, but I am gonna do this first just to give it a little bit of time to dry. All right, so now we're just gonna make a little wreath, basically. We're gonna take some greenery and some berries, and you can use whatever you want on this, but I thought this was really cute, and I love finding these things to DIY at Hobby Lobby, especially when you catch the sales, really, really good prices, and it gives you a little bit more variety than just Dollar Tree. I feel like if you have a Hobby Lobby and a Dollar Tree nearby, Hobby Lobby is more consistent in what they carry than the different Dollar Trees. And if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so much. Also say hello in the comments and let me know what your favorite DIY from today's video is. I'm gonna put a little dab by the top of the beads to keep them from turning at the top because that is where I have the leaves attached. So I realized that this Merry Christmas banner is big for the wreath, but I thought it looked cute like that. So we're just going to attach that with some hot glue. And that's gonna do it for this little DIY. I had so much fun with today's DIYs. I hope that you enjoyed them as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you next time. Bye guys. All right, so for this next DIY, I have this little pine cone pick. I actually picked this up at Hobby Lobby in their fall clearance. So it was originally $1.99. I probably, I definitely paid less than a dollar for it. It might've been more like 50 cents when I got it. Um, but I picked a couple of these up. They're kind of like plasticky, but they're pretty nice. And, but I, you can definitely pick up pine cones, pine cone picks, like various places, various times of the year. Um, you can also just use a real pine cone. And I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint in the color Fern. And we're going to give this a coat of paint. I am going to give a pretty good coat of paint, but it's okay if like every, bit is not covered um, for sure, but you can do that however you want to do it. Um, I'm going to, on this part, 
on the, um, I don't know what you call the little parts of the pine cone. I'm going to just kind of paint um, going in the same direction that they're laying. And I'm not worried about getting like all down in. I'm gonna focus mainly on the tips and then get, you know, a little bit, bit down in there. But you can do that how you want. So this is about the coverage I got. You can see if you look down here, there's a lot of brown from this direction. There's more green. And I'm actually gonna do two of these, but I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. So there's a lot of things you could do with these. You could add some snow, I'm not going to. Um, and there's a lot of things you could use for your base. I just have these little wood pieces. They, these are from the Dollar Tree. I've had these forever, but they sell these periodically. They're not a seasonal item. That's what I'm gonna use for the base of my tree. But like I said, there's a lot of things you could do. Um, I looked at a few different things that looked at a small little tapered candle holder that I thought about painting. But when I saw these, I just, I thought this was gonna be my best option. So I'm gonna trim these down. Wow, that went flying. These little wires are not little wires. They're pretty, they are pretty substantial. Golly. So I'm not, um, I didn't trim mine down super small. I wanted to give myself a little bit and I don't have any tools or little drill. You could do that. I'm just gonna use pointy scissors and see if I can't wedge a little hole in the center here. Of course, if you have a little drill, you could easily do that too. And that helps me know about how long my stem wants to be. I don't really want a stem um, to be seen because this is actually going to be our trunk and our base. So once I figure out how deep I can go with it, I will trim um, my stem down a little bit more. Now that I have my hole made and uh, my pine cone stem trimmed down so that it'll just fit nicely in there, I'm gonna fill that hole with hot glue and put our pine cone down in there. Oh my goodness, I love how these came out. They came out better than I expected. These will be nice little filler pieces on my shelves and could totally be used for the winter season as well. All right guys, so that is gonna do it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for this long, fun, mega video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.